fighting a 333 year war? Yup. Killing giant red dragons? You know it. Getting invaded by vikings? Wait, what? Today I played 800 years of the most fun castle building simulator out there. I played 800 years of kingdoms and castles. The Kingdom of Vortia was established. Its banner consisted of the Vortide Crest along with two stripes to signify the 2000 plus loyal supporters of the king. That's you guys. The main island where the kingdom was going to reside had plentiful trees, a decent amount of stones, and very little iron. I chose a little clearing in between a bunch of trees to put down the foundations of the keep. The five builders that pledged their lives to the kingdom started construction. Their hard work had paid off. Within the first year of settlement, the keep was constructed. There was even an archer tower at the top of the keep that provided a small range of protection. If any enemies were to come in this range, the archers would take care of them. Even though the trees provided good cover to conceal any buildings, they weren't ideal for building a city on top of. So I gracefully ordered all of the trees in the proximity of the keep to be cut down. As the trees were being converted into useful wood, I tried to look at all the different buildings and items that I could construct for my city. Owning a new kingdom does take some getting used to after all. Luckily, I didn't have to do everything alone. There were three different advisors that could advise me on what I needed to do. The first one talked about agriculture, the second one talked about city planning, and the third one talked about military strategies. The tree clearing was taking a long time. I ordered my builders not to cut down as many, just so I could actually start building homes for them as it seemed like they were getting a little bit unhappy. The second I saw some trees clear up, I started construction on roads so that way I could map out where the houses and farms would be at. I built the first three farms of the kingdom and then the first three houses of the kingdom. Well, that made a lot of people happy. I wanted to finish cutting down the trees, but I also needed to start working on my city a bit more. So I made woodcutting the long term goal, and any city construction was to be done right away. I needed more farms as the population of Vortia grew to 10 citizens. It was truly becoming an attractive place to live. I laid out where the iron mines and stone quarries were going to be, and then I built actual roads to those locations. Right when things seemed like they were going perfect, a fire broke out in one of my wheat fields. It then spread to the other five fields, catching them all on fire. Unfortunately, I didn't have a well constructed because I didn't have stone. I had no idea where my citizens were going to go and get water to put out this fire. One of my citizens even ran all the way to the ocean to grab water. Unfortunately, he didn't make it back in time to put out the fires and they burned out by themselves, destroying all six of my wheat fields. Thankfully enough, they only costed a little bit of wood to repair, and I had an abundance of wood so this wasn't bad. I placed down a stone quarry so I could finally build a well, and then I told my citizens to prioritize quarrying stone over timber work. I then plopped down a few houses and built my very first apple tree farm. I wanted to make sure that I kept my citizens happiness up high. That's why I built an apple farm and wheat farms. I finally had enough stone to create a well. This time if anything caught on fire, my citizens would be prepared to put it out. After placing down another apple farm, I admired the beauty of my little hamlet. It was no longer just a keep. It was a collection of roads, houses, farms, a well, and a stone quarry. The plan wasn't to stop there. I ordered the clearing of some trees, and then built a wheat granary and a town square. While all the construction was going on, I heard a dragon roaring off into the distance. It happened to be flying over the island that we decided to build our kingdom on. Thankfully enough, they didn't hear all the noise and commotion that we were making. That alone could have been the end of Vortia. Right when the town square was built, my citizens started to celebrate the transition of our kingdom from a little hamlet into a small village. After the celebration, I constructed a road to where the iron mine was going to be. 
I also stumbled across the power of being able to rename any single building. Sure enough, I renamed the keep to something a little bit more fitting. I didn't like how the town square was facing the keep, so I demolished it. I wanted the keep to be facing outward towards the city so that everybody can enjoy it. It wasn't meant for only me. I also had the idea to have the town square surrounded with roads. This way it looked a lot more spacious and there weren't just a bunch of buildings crowding it. I created a little road that headed away from the town hall and put a cottage down on this road. I knew that this was going to be the new housing area from now on. I wanted to make sure that my citizens were living comfortably and cottages looked like they were the perfect way to do that. I then placed down a tavern to keep up citizen happiness and I also finished off the town square with roads. Now that looks clean. I thought it would be a good idea to place down a stockpile right next to the stone quarry. This way my workers wouldn't have to travel all the way to my keep to drop off the stone. I also put down another stone quarry as this seemed like it was one of the most valuable resources. I constructed almost all of the buildings that I could that didn't require a currency. So I decided that I needed to build a tax collector and start taking some taxes so that way I'd be able to afford new buildings that were better and be able to employ specialist workers. I then built another apple orchard, a produce storage, another cottage in the new neighborhood, and I also built a long road to the ocean. I realized that I didn't have any military defenses inside of my village, so I started working on a stone gate and some stone walls. I didn't have enough stone to surround my whole village, so I just started working on what I could. There were also these little rocks that got in the way and I wasn't able to build on those tiles. Randomly enough, another fire broke out in my city. It was at one of the cottages. Thankfully, I had a well, so my citizens were able to get a bunch of water and put out the fire in no time. I connected two roads in my kingdom to make an alternate path that could be faster depending on where you were heading in it. I then also threw in a stockpile and an iron mine, my very first iron mine. After placing a few more walls, I decided to consult my advisors to see what they recommend for the kingdom. The agriculture advisor said that I should build more roads to the granaries, the city advisor told me that I should build more stockpiles, and the military advisor told me I should build more defenses. Who would have thought? I continued to make small improvements to my village in hopes that they would add up to become something great. I then ordered the construction of the Chamber of War. This building was used to research upgrades for my troops, and it also allows me to build the barracks, siege workshop, and archer hut. It seemed like the materials in my village were not getting dispersed evenly. I noticed that at one stockpile there was an excess amount of stone, at another there was iron, and at the main stockpile it was everything else. So I ordered a cart to go around and deliver different amounts of each material to each stockpile. I wanted to make things more efficient, so I destroyed the smaller tavern and built a bigger one. This way it was able to support the whole kingdom rather than just a small area. While I was distracted by the construction, a diplomat snuck up to my keep. I talked to him and found out that he was a diplomat for King Banta. They just wanted to come and talk to us and say hi as they were a neighboring kingdom. I was very polite to him as I didn't know what power he held, so we just had a regular conversation and things went pretty smooth. Soon after, another diplomat arrived at my keep. I found out that they were sent by Queen Mazenberger, a ruler from another neighboring kingdom. She was very aggressive, but I remained polite, and she seemed to like that. I didn't want to start any fights yet, as I didn't have any defenses set up, and I didn't have any troops at all to fight a war. After dealing with all that diplomacy, I plopped down a market and started construction on it. I also started construction on a manor, which is basically a large house that could fit a lot of citizens and it keeps them comfortable by burning coal. More progress was made on the walls and King Banta sent another diplomat. This time he asked if I would be able to help him clear a wolf den with some of my troops. I unfortunately didn't have any troops and the wolf den happened to be on his island, so I wasn't able to sail over there as I had no boats. Out of nowhere, a barbarian invasion began. It looked like there was only one boat heading towards my island, but I really didn't have any defenses. So I tried setting up an archer tower, but it looked like a lot of the enemies were already getting close to my settlement. My only hope was my keep, 
which had some decent range and a decent amount of archers on it. There were three archer towers attached to it after all. The barbarians immediately started pillaging two of my cottages and made a run for my treasure room. They were able to steal up to 100 gold coins, but my archers took all of them out and we got all of that gold back. After dealing with the barbarians on my island, I built a dock so that way I could have mercenary ships go to the neighboring kingdoms. There were still a few barbarians roaming around, but thankfully they didn't bother me. Apparently, in Queen Mazenberger's kingdom, there was a plague going on, so she reached out to me and asked for advice, which she was very grateful I gave. After dealing with all the diplomacy, I ended up building an archery range. This allowed me to train archers, obviously. I then had a blacksmith constructed, which made tools and armaments, and then a random merchant boat showed up at my docks, which I didn't really trade with them. I constructed some more wells to make sure that the city was safe from any fires. Right when I thought I was getting a break from all this diplomacy stuff, King Banta sent another diplomat. This time he told me that his kingdom was experiencing a plague and he needed advice. This must have been the same plague that I heard about from earlier. So I gave him some advice and our relationship increased. The orders to construct a merchant ship were given. And of course while I was distracted dealing with that, a dragon decided to sneak up on my kingdom. It looked like they were coming in hot and I didn't know what their intention was. Right when they were right above my kingdom, we started pelting it with arrows, and it started shooting fire at some of my buildings. Fortunately for me, they just started to fly off once they started getting pelt with arrows, and the fire was put out pretty quickly. The kingdom of Vortia had survived its first dragon encounter. It seemed like times were changing and things were getting a lot more dangerous. I decided that I needed to focus even more on defenses and put up some more walls and an archer tower. I then assigned my merchant ship to go and trade with King Banta's kingdom. Right when the merchant ship arrived, he had sent a diplomat to come talk to me. He told me that they had fought off a bunch of barbarians and having a whole bunch of archer towers was super helpful. He recommended that I do the same. I did plan on building more archer towers, but I had to get the walls done first, and I needed to build a forester and a charcoal maker, which was more important at the time. I really focused on my gates and walls, and I even tried building some moats to see what would happen. I didn't know if these would be a good defense, but I wanted to test them out. Queen Mazenberger sent another diplomat. This time she said that I needed to build more archer towers because she had just fended off a whole bunch of barbarians with them. This was essentially the same thing that King Banta said to me. After all that diplomacy, I placed down a well and a transport ship. I also placed down a medical clinic. If both of the neighboring kingdoms got plagues, then that meant that my city was next, so I had to prepare. Out of nowhere, King Banta decided to gift me some items. I have no idea why, but I might as well take them. Soon after, I bought some tools off of a merchant ship that was at my dock. I needed to use these tools to clear out any rocks that were blocking the way of potential walls. What good is a castle wall if there's holes in it? Things were coming together as my city was almost fully encircled by walls. This was important because if any barbarians or invaders tried to attack, I would now have some protection. Sadly, one of the villagers had died while making coal. I built a graveyard and let his body rest peacefully. This made a lot of the citizens very happy. It had become a reoccurring thing by now, but another dragon had decided to fly over my city. We started pelting it with arrows, and it just flew by. It didn't decide to bother us. Right after that, Queen Mazenberger sent a diplomat. She demanded 40 gold. I wasn't going to pay this to her, so I told her no, and she got very upset with me. I don't know who she thought she was, but I wasn't going to pay her just cause. The blacksmith made enough tools to remove a rock that was plaguing my kingdom. It was in the middle of my walls and I wasn't able to build there. King Banta's diplomat arrived at my keep and he wanted to discuss trade prices. This made our relationship grow even more. It was pretty clear to me that Queen Mazenberger was going to be my enemy and King Banta was going to be my friend. If I needed to rely on anyone, it would definitely be King Banta. I wanted to fortify my walls and right when I was doing that, some barbarians decided it was time to invade. 
Only one group of barbarians made it over to my city, and we quickly took them out with the keep archer towers. I then built another manor and started to do some other improvements for the city. Time started to fly by, and a lot happened. Queen Mazenberger discussed trade prices with me. I upgraded some houses to a manor, upgraded some walls. The kingdom was finally recognized as a full town, built some apple orchards, and even built a diplomacy hall. Continuous improvements were being made in Fortia all around the clock. It didn't matter the time or day. Some archers were finally built, and I was able to take out one of the wolf dens that had been plaguing the construction of my walls for the longest time. The wolves had quite a lot of HP and were taking forever to kill, but my archers finally managed to do it. Right when the deed was done, I removed their den and built two walls where the wolves were guarding. It became that time of the year again when barbarians tried to invade. They only sent one army and they were taken out with ease as usual. Queen Mazenberger then sent a diplomat asking for more tribute. I didn't give any the first time and I sure as heck wasn't going to give any this time. So I told her no and lost even more relationship with her. I built a bigger tax collector, <clears throat> I mean a treasury room, and then King Banta sent a diplomat to come talk to me. He was getting pretty annoying at this point because he would always send a diplomat and basically say nothing. I only put up with it because I needed a decent ally in case Queen Massenberger declared war on me. It seemed pretty likely that she would because she kept coming by and asking for a tribute which I was never going to pay. Things were going pretty awesome otherwise. I built my own diplomats and sent them to a random neighboring kingdom to see what it was like. I didn't know it yet, but I was actually sending them to go see Queen Mazenberger. While the brave diplomats sailed on the boat to Queen Mazenberger's island, some improvements were made around the castle. It wasn't long until the diplomats arrived where they needed to be. I sent them to go see the keep, and this castle was low-key looking a little bit better than mine. It was intimidating. I also tried talking to Queen Mazenberger with my diplomats, and she got mad for absolutely no reason. I lost relationship because of this. Strangely enough, when I returned to my island, Queen Mazenberger had sent diplomats to come talk to me. I don't know what she wanted, but it seemed like she was just in the mood to chat. This was strange because she just kicked me off of her island. I didn't understand why she wanted to talk. That sounds like something she would say. What? It was clear to me at this point that Queen Mazenberger must have just not liked me. There's no way that anything she was doing was logical, and there was nothing that I could do to make our relationship better. Out of nowhere, a fire broke out at one of my manors. Thankfully there were wells all over my city, so it really didn't cause an issue. King Banta's diplomat came by once again and we just had a conversation, but it improved our relationship. I was really caught off guard when a barbarian army started to attack my walls. I don't know how I didn't even notice them until they got so close. There was a giant barbarian that was dealing massive damage and they took out two of my manors. This was so annoying because I had just built them not too long ago. My archers must have done a good job because out of nowhere the barbarians decided it was time to retreat. They did their damage and they got out of there. Soon after the barbarians invaded, a dragon started to attack. They caught one of my buildings on fire and we scared them away with a bunch of arrows. It seems like things weren't really going well this year. We noticed another barbarian marching on our castle to the north. This was not going to be a good encounter. What the heck? Why did he run away when I sent my archers over? I'm not complaining. Things started to go south in the kingdom. We lost quite a few citizens from the few events that had just happened, and because of that I had to lower the tax rate as people were getting unhappy. And we all know that no taxes means no money. And no money means no troops or defenses. This was going to be an issue. I had to spend as much time as I could rebuilding the city and returning it to its former glory. If I didn't, then I wouldn't be able to afford troops to defend the castle. I noticed that Queen Mazenberger had sent a diplomat and they were just sitting outside my keep. I didn't want to anger her anymore because I knew if I did, war would start. So I basically ignored her 
and made sure not to make any contact with the diplomats. To promote growth in my city, I bought some items off of the merchant ships. And then King Banta noticed that I was kind of struggling, so he sent a gift, and I honestly was so thankful that he was my ally at this point. I hosted a festival in my town square to make my citizens happy. They really needed it in the middle of all these disasters. The festival paid off. It seemed like the happiness of my citizens was going up significantly. So I played around with the tax mount, and I was able to snag 10% taxes from all of my citizens. It honestly seemed like someone was working against me, because out of nowhere, my diplomat hall got struck by lightning and caught on fire. Luckily it was raining, so the fire was put out immediately, but it was still just a minor inconvenience, and why did that even have to happen? I started to fortify some walls, and thankfully, I did. Within the next year, I noticed that there was a huge amount of barbarians charging my island. Even Queen Mazenberger's island started to get raided by a bunch of barbarians. I was getting a little bit nervous because this seemed like a lot more than what I'd be able to handle. It seemed like some of the barbarians though did stop at King Banta's island instead of just coming straight to mine. Uh oh. Four massive barbarians, accompanied by one small party of barbarians, started to attack my walls. I was doomed. There was no way that my one unit of archers and my lack of towers was going to take care of all of these barbarians. Unexpectedly enough, Queen Mazenberger's troops came to my aid. She had quite a few tracking down these barbarians, and luckily she did, otherwise I would not have survived this at all. Now I at least had a chance to survive. The enemy barbarians were able to destroy quite a few buildings in my kingdom. This was super annoying because I had just recovered from the last barbarian invasion. Things were about to get even more difficult. At least the kingdom was still standing though. I told all of my builders to rebuild as much as they can. Almost everything needed to be repaired or rebuilt to some degree. Jeez, that is a lot of rubble. Queen Mazenberger had her diplomat outside of my keep for quite a while. Unfortunately, when I talked to them, they said it was too late to do anything, and I lost reputation with her. It was clear that I needed more troops after the last barbarian encounter. So, I started training some more archers. Once they finished training, I sent them to clear out a wolf den. That was when King Banta sent another diplomat. It wasn't really anything important, so I went on and tried to upgrade different parts of my city. Some of these upgrades included trying to place a large stone quarry, which I couldn't for some reason figure out, building a new stone gate, and constructing a ballista. The inevitable happened. Queen Mazenberger came back asking for a tribute. I did owe her a little bit because she did help me out against those barbarians, but I didn't feel like paying her and I really didn't have the money to. So I told her never, and she declared war on me. Since I was now at war, I had to get my stone quarry situation figured out ASAP. It was only a matter of time before I saw a whole bunch of troops sailing towards my castle. The siege began. My troops weren't even in position, and the enemies already had started attacking my castle walls. We rained down as many arrows as we possibly could at the enemies, while they started to attack our walls with swords and shot arrows back at my archers. A catapult from their backline started flinging stones at my castle wall. This was not going to be good. A catapult could easily take down my castle walls, and I knew that they wouldn't hold for too long if I didn't do something quick. Luckily enough, another archer unit had finished training. So I had all four of my archers focus in on one single target at a time. They melted the enemies like butter. It wasn't long until I was able to send some archers out to try and take on the catapult. It seemed like we were going to get a little break. My archers were able to take out all of the remaining enemies, and I was now able to build up some defenses as I awaited the arrival of more enemy forces. Once they arrived, one of my castle walls was completely destroyed, and enemies were breaching the wall. They started attacking my barracks and my archer range, but fortunately, they didn't destroy either buildings, and I was able to take out all the enemies who made it inside my castle. While my troops were trying to make some quick repairs, more enemies rushed us. 
I was getting pretty comfortable with these four archer units as they were doing a really good job. I honestly got a little bit too cocky with them and started sending them outside of the castle walls for the different waves of the enemies. Honestly, this wasn't my smartest idea, but I did just train the swordsmen to be able to block off any enemies who tried to rush them. Well, at least I thought that's how it was going to work. Once my swordsmen engaged with some enemy swordsmen, they ran right past them, and then the enemies were able to take out some of my archers. This was unfortunate because I had a lack of soldiers, and I couldn't really build any as I didn't have any supplies. This could honestly be the end if I don't play my cards right. To spice things up even more, the barbarians started their raids. This could either go really well for me, or really poorly for me. If they attack my island, I definitely won't be able to hold them back. But now if they attack my foe's island, then that could be something pretty good. Luckily enough, only one barbarian unit made it to my island, and they were super weak, so I honestly lucked out. On the other side of my island, however, I saw more enemy troops. It seemed like they were hesitant to either attack me or go after the barbarians. This made things a lot easier because their forces were split up and easier to handle. Sadly, my swordsman's luck had come to an end. He was fighting off some invaders when he was killed. He was the last of that unit. My archers were able to handle the rest of the troops and then I started building a giant tower in the front of my castle. My idea was to sell enough supplies so that way I could build a ballista at the top of the tower and it would be able to take out a lot of enemies a lot more efficiently than my archers were. The ballista took some time to construct and Queen Mazenberger sent a diplomat saying that she would be willing to have peace if I were to pay her. There was no way I was going to pay her a tribute for peace. I was honestly winning the war, so why would I pay her? Right as the ballista was nearing completion, the enemies tried to take a different approach and attack my castle from a different side. This wasn't smart because I mowed down the enemies and then I rebuilt the castle wall even stronger so they couldn't try it again. It looked like Queen Mazenberger had a lack of troops to send over, and my ballista was now fully completed. One of the enemy transport ships that tried to drop off some more troops at my island started to get lit up by my ballista. It honestly did a lot of damage to it, and it could probably take out the full thing if I didn't want it to focus on the archers and take them out right away. An enemy catapult landed on my island, and the ballista took one shot at it, dealing half of its health. Wow, that was overpowered. My archers finished off any remaining enemies, and I realized that it was now time to go on the offensive. I wanted to bring the battle to Queen Mazenberger's doorstep. The only issue with that was that I lacked a lot of troops. Surely I wouldn't send my only three archer units to attack because they would be slaughtered. Hmm, I need to raise some kind of army, but I don't have the resources for it. The best thing that I could come up with was to build up my castle defenses and let my kingdom flourish. That way I would have an unlimited amount of resources to build an unlimited amount of troops. So that's exactly what I planned to do. I fought off invaders from Queen Mazenberger and I also fortified my defenses at the same time. My goal was to have such stellar defenses that I didn't need any archers to hang out on the walls. This would free up a lot of units that I would probably end up be using in the future. After conjuring my battle plans, I placed down a mason. This way, my buildings and walls could actually be repaired instead of having them be half broken. I then continued the construction of a giant ballista tower. This was one of my largest towers and of course, there was going to be a ballista at the top of it. One of my noble citizens had informed me that the taller the towers are, the more range you could get out of them. This was my inspiration for building such a tall tower. More of Queen Mazenberger's troops arrived on my doorstep. There was only an archer unit, a catapult, and a swordsman unit. I was able to take out all of them pretty quickly, but the catapult was able to destroy my archery range, which was super annoying because I now had to rebuild it. I do have to give it to Queen Mazenberger. She is very persistent and aggressive. I respect that. I continued to reinforce the castle wall and chipped out a little hole so that way I could build another gate. This way, the forester would be able to come in and out of the city a lot easier. Another royal citizen had suggested that idea and I'm so appreciative of it. 
As I was distracted by the wall and gate, more enemies had arrived on my doorstep. Luckily, it was only one archer unit, and then another boat had arrived with another archer unit. Since the construction of my new ballista tower was done, I wanted to check out its range. Who would have predicted there's another boat on the way with more enemies? I honestly didn't understand why Queen Mazenberger was sending only one unit at a time, but hey, I wasn't going to complain. I had received information that King Banta was sending me another gift. This was awesome because I'm assuming he probably saw that we were drained on resources and were barely holding on to fight off the invaders. I hate to admit it, but I finally started to consider King Banta my friend. He always sent resources at the perfect time when I needed them, and I was much appreciative for that. I now had enough resources to finally build that gate I was planning. I also was able to replace one of my wooden walls with stone walls. I then noticed that it was taking quite a while to get resources to the front of my castle. This was because I didn't have any stockpiles there. So, I rerouted my cart and then built another one. Out of nowhere, I was informed that Queen Mazenberger had sent a diplomat to my castle. I was wondering what she wanted and I assumed that she was going to ask to make peace. I mean, to be fair, she can't really dislike me any more than she does. Before I dealt with her diplomats, I ended up building another ballista tower to make sure that the other side of my castle had proper protection. I'm honestly impressed with that range, wow. The defenses were coming along very smoothly. I didn't have enough stone though to keep building them at the rate that I was. So I knew it was time to build a large stone quarry. This would increase production by a lot. I also ordered the archery range to be rebuilt. That way, if I needed more archer units, I could train them. Of course, right when things started to go well, I noticed that there were a lot more troops trying to attack. I had to rush my archers along the wall of the castle to make it to where the enemies were trying to invade. Wow, this is the most troops she ever sent. I don't know if I should be scared or impressed. This encounter was a lot more stressful than the last few. They actually had a chance of breaching one of my walls. If they did, and they were able to pillage some of my houses, things would not be looking well for my citizens. Luckily, my veteran archers and newly constructed defenses held them back. If I learned anything from my last encounter, it was that I needed more defenses. Right when I started the construction on the new ballista tower, some Vikings and Queen Mazenberger's troops tried to attack. They both only sent one unit, so I got pretty lucky. When the tower completed, I checked out its range, as well as the other ballistas' ranges around my base. I finally got some peace of mind, knowing that each wall was covered by at least one ballista. It was time to put my newly built defenses to the test. More Vikings were landing on my island, and I had to fight them off. This didn't seem like it was going to be that hard of an invasion, until I realized that Queen Mazenberger also had coordinated troops to attack me, while I was being attacked by the Vikings. I made quick work of the Viking invaders, and then sent my archers to the other side of the castle to deal with Mazenberger's troops. Things could have been a lot worse if she had sent more troops because this side of the castle had already almost been destroyed. I'm surprised that the walls even held for as long as they did. At least I know the mason will be doing his job around the castle. I couldn't stop admiring the coverage that my defenses had. So I did what any other good king would do, and built some more. I was getting a lot of complaints that there was a bunch of corpses in the front of the castle. Obviously there was a war that was fought there, but I thought the graveyard keeper would have been taking care of things. I had a little chat with him and made sure that he was doing his job, and then built some more defenses to make my castle even more overpowered. My troops started to prepare as another ship full of enemies made its way over to our front gates. Fortunately enough, my new defenses, the ballistas, took out the boat before it could even land the troops. This sunk all of them, and we didn't even have to fight them off. Now, if I just made my walls a little bit stronger, I think my castle would be pretty much to the point where it would be unraidable. Oh, now it's time to find out if it's dragon resistant. A scary looking red and black dragon flew right past my castle. It didn't attack though. I honestly was a little bit sad about this 
because I wanted to see if my defenses could take him out. Real quick, if you're feeling generous and want to support the channel, go ahead and join my channel membership for exclusive perks. I then built another archer tower, Queen Mazenberger's troops rushed my castle, and King Banta asked me if I could send more iron on my trade ships to him. While my new archer tower was being constructed, I found this random witch hidden away in the woods. She was willing to trade some food for potions. I unfortunately didn't have the resources she wanted, so I figured I would return to her later. My dreams had come true. A half-beaten dragon flew right over my kingdom, and my ballistas started firing away at it. Before I knew it, the archers and ballistas took the dragon out. It fell right on top of my charcoal maker, and a lot of my citizens started to rush over and pick up the dragon meat to store it for later and eat it. I also realized that one of my ballistas was set up in the perfect position to fire at boats that were coming to my island. This was perfect, and it probably explains how I sunk one of the boats from earlier. It was about time that I started expanding my wall to a second layer. This would make my defenses almost unbeatable. I first started off walling off areas around the towers, and then I started to just go crazy and place as many of the walls as I could. I blew through stone like it was nothing. This was going to benefit me in the long run, so I convinced myself that it was okay. King Banta's merchant ship had arrived at my docks and I sold some apples off to kickstart my economy again. I then watched my ballistas pelt an enemy ship as it came to my island. The troops aboard had no chance of survival as they landed and then instantly met their deaths. Right when I thought Queen Mazenberg couldn't make me dislike her anymore, she sent over a diplomat and also a little archer hiding on the boat to try and sneak him past my walls. Obviously my guards caught him and we handled the situation. I adjusted my transport cart once again, fought off some more troops, and then even more troops, ignored Queen Mazenberger's diplomat, and then talked to King Banta's diplomat. Unfortunately, King Banta reminded me that I was supposed to send over some iron, and I never did. This affected our relationship in a negative way. Right after, I noticed a couple people had dropped dead from a plague. I was concerned because I didn't want my citizens to have to deal with the plague. A lot of people would die if it spread to everyone in the city, but thankfully it seemed like it was contained with only those four people. I continued to construct some more stone walls, and sure enough, a bunch of vikings started to invade. It seems like whenever I was putting down walls, there was always something going on. Maybe I just shouldn't put down walls anymore. Strangely enough, only one viking invader made it to my island. The rest seemed like they were attacking King Banta, and none of them looked like they were attacking Queen Mazenberger, really. But King Banta was prepared, and he actually ended up sending troops over to try and support me. It had hit me at that point that if King Banta had this many spare troops just laying around, maybe I could convince him to join in the war against Queen Mazenberger with me. Hmm, I think I have a new plan. The construction and upgrading of my walls continued. I accumulated and was producing a lot of stone, so I was able to place these walls like they were nothing. I also realized I had to clear out the forester area because I wanted to build a double gate in that location. It was time that I started working a little bit on the infrastructure of my city. I replaced some of the regular roads with stone roads, allowing my citizens to travel faster on them. I then ordered the training of a diplomat because I wanted to send them out to the different kingdoms. I also built another archer tower. I then checked out some more defenses to see if they would be useful for the current situation that I'm in. Unfortunately, neither of them were, but they were pretty cool. One of them was a seagate and the other was a Greek fire emplacement. Queen Mazenberger sent another diplomat and I checked out what she wanted. Apparently she was expecting me to pay 460 gold to get out of this war. Well unfortunately I wasn't the one wasting troops sending them to their slaughter. So, I wasn't going to pay that much. Right when the diplomat left, a dragon started to attack my castle. Maybe this was a sign. Maybe I should have made peace with Queen Mazenberger. Uh, nah, it's nothing. I ended up taking out the dragon so quickly, it didn't even get to shoot fire at any of my buildings. The defenses were paying off. That is a lot of meat. 
I then went crazy, placing a whole bunch more walls, had a good conversation with King Banta, and built a forester. My castle wall started to look very thick and sturdy. It was perfect timing too because Queen Mazenberger had sent over a bunch of troops to try and attack them. I honestly learned so much from this encounter. The enemies went straight for my gates as they were the weakest point on my walls now. So I had to double up all of the gates around my castle. Queen Mazenberger probably realized that this was her only opportunity to try and attack a weak part on my walls before they were fully reinforced. She sent over as many troops as she could, and honestly, didn't succeed. Between my veteran archers and all of the defenses placed around my castle walls, these six enemy units weren't even close to making a dent in my castle. Queen Mazenberger had tried the same exact strategy once again. I had reinforced one of my gates, and it looked like she was now heading over to try and attack the side of my castle that didn't have reinforced gates. This time she sent another formidable army, and they almost made their way inside of my castle. The gate was about to collapse, but thankfully, it held. If the enemies ended up holding out a little bit longer, they would have honestly broken in and made it inside of the walls. It felt like everything was just cruising right now. Nobody was able to make it inside of my castle, and I had really good defenses, so there's nothing that the enemies could really do. There was even a viking invasion with giant vikings, and they did absolutely no damage to my walls because we were able to kill them before they got close. After some more defensive upgrades, expanding my graveyard, and talking to King Banta, I decided it was time to build a large iron mine. I had to destroy some of the walls that I had just built and one ballista tower. This was a little bit unfortunate, but I knew that I could build back the defenses twice as good and as twice as fast. So I did, and then I ended up destroying that little iron mine that I had, and I built a large one so that way we could increase the production of iron by a significant amount. A random dragon flew over my kingdom and didn't even attack, even though we pelted it with arrows and ballista shots. I then also sunk one of Queen Mazenberger's ships that she tried to attack with. As usual, where I could, I upgraded my walls, and that was when a viking invasion started to happen again. Yeah, he stood no chance. It was kind of strange, right when the vikings were killed off, King Banta offered me another gift. I wasn't going to say no to it, but I also didn't really need it at this point. I scouted out Queen Mazenberger's dock, and I realized that there was a little area where I could definitely do some damage to it without getting attacked by her archer towers. So I loaded one archer unit into a boat and sent it over to her island. On the way there, it passed an enemy boat, and my archers exchanged arrows with the enemy archers. Once my boat was in position, I realized that there were archer towers nearby. But luckily, they weren't taking any shots at my troops. So, I posted up the boat right near the dock, and it started unloading on a bunch of swordsmen and catapults. They didn't even react. After a while of shooting arrows, I sent my archers back to our kingdom so they could get the break that they deserved. Unfortunately, right when they docked, a bunch of enemy swordsmen started to attack them and they took heavy casualties. I watched one of my ballista towers start shooting at an enemy ship that was coming by. I found it so satisfying that my towers were able to defend my kingdom as well as attack people on the sea at the same time. King Banta sent over a diplomat to discuss trade prices. I gave him a couple steals because I wanted to keep our relationship the best that it could be. I was going to ask him to join in the war after all, so I needed to make sure that I was on the best terms with him. I then started to destroy some farms as I was going to repurpose the land. That was when a bunch of giant vikings started to attack my castle. There were four of them to be exact, and they looked pretty intimidating. I rushed my soldiers to the side of the castle where the enemies were attacking from. They started shooting arrows down at these giants, but it didn't look like it did a lot of damage, so I had to rely on the ballistas to carry. I think creating an airlock was the best thing I could have done for that side of the castle. The enemies were able to breach the first gate, but I killed all of them before they got to the second. I sent a diplomat to Queen Mazenberger's kingdom. Unfortunately, she wasn't interested in talking at all. She actually told me to get out of there, I wasn't going to put up with this kind of treatment. So I was trying to escalate my plot of turning King Banta against her. 
right when I told my diplomat to go over to King Banta's kingdom, a plague broke out in my city. Maybe this was foreshadowing what was to come, a bunch of death. I had never seen King Banta's kingdom until now. I was honestly surprised that it was so built up and it looked like he was flourishing. I made a bunch of small talk and gave him advice, which improved our relationship. I didn't want to be too pushy and ask him to join war just yet, not until I had a very favorable relationship with him. Once we wrapped up our conversation, I gave him some space. Being too persistent sometimes can be a bad thing. I needed a lot of time to go by before I talked to King Banta again, so I ended up making some upgrades and repairs in my castle. I rebuilt a gate, built a giant hospital, traded with some merchants, and upgraded my walls. While I was doing all of this, King Banta sent one of his own diplomats to come talk to me. He told me that he built a lot more towers like usual and suggested I did the same. I thanked him for the suggestion even though he already had given it before, and then our relationship went up. I was only a tad off of having a very favorable relationship with King Banta. I knew that now would be the perfect time to try and talk to him again and win his favor. And that's exactly what I did. Our relationship went to very favorable, and I knew that it was time to ask him to form a military alliance with me. He gratefully agreed to my military alliance. I then asked him if he would declare war on Queen Mazenberger, and he said yes. It was now time to take things on the offensive. There was, however, a hole in my plan. I didn't train any troops before asking him to join the military alliance. I honestly kind of forgot that he would start invading right away once he declared war on Queen Mazenberger. King Banta's ships headed directly to Queen Mazenberger's island, as some of her ships headed towards mine. I was really hoping that his forces would be enough to at least deal some damage. I felt bad that I asked him to join war and didn't have troops ready, but that completely slipped my mind. It seems like Queen Mazenberger was set up for this scenario. She had a whole bunch of troops hidden away in her castle, and once King Banta's forces started to get a little weak, they started to charge. That was a catastrophe. Things could have gone a lot better, and honestly, due to my lack of planning, I kind of messed that up for us. This scenario was ideal though, because instead of having to fight a one-on-one -on -one war, it was a now 2v1. So instead of Queen Mazenberger sending all of her troops to my island, she'll be spreading them out across mine and King Banta's island. A bunch of vikings started to attack my castle. This time there were three giant vikings and two smaller units, one of them was a catapult and one of them was a swordsman. We were able to handle one of the larger vikings immediately, but the second one was able to get to my gate and start dealing damage to it. The third one was also up close and personal. My gate that I had just repaired was destroyed again. Unfortunately, the enemies were able to start doing damage to my interior gate, but they also didn't have much health left either. Right when I finished off the vikings, Queen Mazenberger sent some troops and was able to sneak them into the gaps that the enemies made. They started dealing a lot of damage, but I had four archers and a whole bunch of towers taking them on. I then built another house, a bakery, a windmill, and some wheat farms. This combination of buildings would allow me to expand my kingdom to even more people. Out of nowhere, a random dragon flew by and I almost killed it while it soared through. I then checked out King Banta's village as it looked like it was getting pretty destroyed. You could tell all things were going well for the kingdom as everything was getting repetitive and there wasn't any harsh conditions that we really had to deal with. Time was flying by and more vikings had already arrived. Honestly it felt like I had just fought some off and they were here again already. Their forces weren't anything that I hadn't dealt with before. There were two large vikings and one small unit of swordsmen. Once I finished them off I was checking out what was going on in Queen Mazenberger's town. I didn't realize it, but two more large vikings had made their way to my castle walls. Since the first layer was breached, they had the potential to do some real damage, but my defenses were way too strong. Queen Mazenberger sent her troops right after the viking invasion as usual. This was a good strategy as I was having to take out vikings and then immediately have to fight her troops off, but she sent very few and they really didn't do any damage. Things continued to progress and I checked out my beautiful town. I placed down another fishing hut, and I had my usual conversation with King Banta. I then placed another apple orchard, fought off some enemies, and checked out the range in my towers that I had just upgraded. 
I was pretty hyped because a single tower was able to cover almost half of my island. That's insane. I found out that if you build up the walls near a tower higher, you can then build the tower taller. That does seem like common sense, but it only has to be the few walls that surround the tower. So, I kinda cheesed this and only ended up building walls taller near the end of the towers. I knew that I had just cheated the game, so I built a church to repent. No, I'm just kidding. My citizens wanted a church because they were unhappy. I wanted to see what was going on with Queen Mazenberger. I was taking out a significant amount of her troops, after all. She still didn't want to talk to me in any way. So, I just told my diplomats to wait another couple years and started to fight off some Vikings. I quickly took them out and then King Banta gave another gift. I ended up rejecting it because I felt like he was giving too many. I accidentally clicked no. I then fortified my base even more and I realized that my castle was now becoming a fortress. It was so well defended and it had huge walls that it looked like it couldn't be invaded at all. I started to think, what is my castle missing? We have really good defenses now, but we don't have a lot of gardens, taverns, museums. So I began building a garden in the middle of where my citizens were settled. This way they got a very nice backyard and it felt like a big community. I also destroyed a small stockpile that looked like it was getting filled and replaced it with the large one. It seemed like my citizens weren't happy with the large church that I built them. So I ended up building another smaller one and this did the trick. It must have been the century of construction. I ended up building a great hall next. I would be able to host huge feasts at this place, so I wanted to make sure that it was as grand as possible. Well, if I'm going to be building all this stuff, I might as well upgrade my roads to stone. So that's exactly what I did. I first focused in on the roads that needed upgrades. So in other words, the roads that were getting used the most. Don't forget, stone roads make people travel a lot faster on them, so I wanted to put them in very populated areas. The curse of the dragons had finally wore off. A random dragon flew out of nowhere and set my ballista on fire and then flew out of there. Hey, this was progress compared to them just flying by. I would have loved if the dragon stayed and fought because then I would have had a bunch of meat for my feast. King Banta reached out to me asking for some more iron and then I upgraded some more roads. Queen Mazenberger had sent some more troops to attack my castle, and at this point it was just pathetic. She was wasting her own citizens' lives and her own materials to basically send them to their slaughter. I made a big decision. I decided that I would build a theater. This wasn't cheap, but I knew it would keep my citizens happy. This caused me to move the charcoal maker because I needed space to put the theater, so I just moved it to the other side of the road. This thing was taking years to build, and I'm not joking when I say years. I fought off a whole viking invasion before it was even constructed. Things were going perfect. The land of Vortia was striving to be its best, and it was succeeding. I needed to do something grand to celebrate the upcoming 200 years. I know exactly what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a statue. So I looked at the different types of statues that I could build, and I picked a dragon one to celebrate the breaking of the curse of the dragon. What seemed like a totally normal winter wasn't. Preparations for armor and weapons were ongoing. And right as spring hit, the barracks had opened for the training of knights. I tried to negotiate with the witch as I heard she was a powerful ally from some of the citizens in my kingdom. Unfortunately, she wasn't interested in talking kind of like Queen Mazenberger, but I knew that I would be able to improve my relationship with her. The barracks had produced some fresh knights as the injured wall archers had cheered them on. It was now their time to recuperate all of the injuries that they had sustained. My ballistas had covered most of the island, but I knew that it was time to build more as the enemies were going to get tougher and tougher. So I picked out a little clearing in the woods and started construction on a new ballista tower. I had also found a spot on the nearby coast that I could build an archer tower. Making his usual rounds, King Banta had sent a diplomat to my city. I talked to him and he asked for iron, which I kept forgetting to send him. This time I'm going to actually try and do it because I have a lot of iron. Before I do that though, let's build some roads. 
Ooh, that's definitely got to be Karma. A giant red dragon, the biggest one I've seen yet, decided that it was time to fly right over my castle, scaring all of my citizens. There were even rumors that it had shut down the economy, and that wasn't because I was training a whole bunch of troops at the same time. Just a second later, another dragon had flew by my kingdom. This one wasn't as scary as it was a lot smaller and we had been facing dragons like this before. The red dragon had made its way to King Banta's kingdom. My diplomats over there weren't having it, so they hopped on a transport boat and came home. Since King Banta helped me out in my times of need, I started to prepare a gift for him as he was fighting off a dragon. Wait, what the heck? The large red dragon had made its way over to my castle now, but thankfully it was almost dead. After one ballista shot, it came crashing down into a nearby forest. Unfortunately, I couldn't see all the meat that it had dropped. All that I did know was I was going to send out a search party and the whole kingdom was going to be eating good tonight. I had to pause the delivery of the gift because obviously we had to fight off a dragon, you know. But not too long after the dragon was dead, I told my workers to continue preparing it. I wanted to pay King Banta back at least a little bit. Right when I had told my diplomats to take the gift over, I just missed a trade ship. I really needed to sell some goods as I was still low on money. I then looked at my new ballista tower and realized that I could build it closer to the coast. This way it would be able to shoot the enemies in Queen Mazenberger's kingdom and I wouldn't even have to send troops over. My gift had arrived at King Banta's keep and our relationship went to the best that it could be. With our friendship being so strong, I knew it was going to be kind of hard to maintain. So I was afraid that it was going to drop a little bit, but if it did, I would have some cushion. Once again, I was looking at my ballista tower, and I found even a better spot to put it. I told my workers to stop reconstructing it and cut down the trees in the better location. This is the last time, I promise. Three Viking ships were sailing directly for my kingdom. I had told one of my transport ships to tuck in just in case they tried to attack it. The Vikings were heading straight for my coast, which didn't seem like a smart idea. This was going to be a piece of cake. That was, of course, until they turned away. I guess the ones on the left aren't my problem anymore. I immediately rushed my archers to the right side of the castle, where there actually were Vikings. There was a giant one that was marching its way directly towards my walls, a smaller, less threatening unit of axemen, and a catapult. Another giant viking, surprisingly enough, had also snuck onto my island. My archers rained down arrows on the infantrymen and then the catapult, while my archer towers and ballistas focused on the giant vikings. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more 100 day content. It didn't take long for my valiant archers to deal with the enemies. Because of that, I was then able to place the foundations for my coastal ballista tower. I needed to start putting some pressure on Queen Mazenberger, even though I haven't started my assaults yet. When I checked on King Banta's city, it looked like he was still fighting off the Vikings. His troops were evenly matched, but he had a lot of defensive archer towers, so I knew he would be fine. I don't know what it was with these giant Vikings, you'd think you'd be able to see them a mile away. But unfortunately, another one had snuck up on my castle. We made light work of him though. I also realized that my archer towers were a little too high up. They were missing a lot of their shots on the target. So of course I took care of them by making them a little bit shorter. Wow, this is really taking a long time to build. Right when I thought the assault was over, another giant viking had made it onto my island. I wasn't that concerned so I continued upgrading walls while my archers and ballistas took care of them. When King Banta's ship arrived at my dock, I immediately began to trade with it. I knew I wasn't really utilizing our trade relationship in the past so now was a good time to start. It's time to start utilizing the land outside of the castle walls. I built a road heading towards the nearby forest. I then placed down a wheat mill and a bunch of wheat farms near it. I wanted this to be another agricultural area growing lots of food. For some reason, it seemed like everybody in my city wanted to be a builder. I had to limit the amount of builder jobs that there were just so that way we could get other things done other than construction. 
King Banta's trade ship had arrived again. This time, it was selling fine rugs. I was thinking about buying them, but they were a little bit too pricey for me. I ended up just selling some items and turning over a profit. Right after, I started construction on a road heading to the coastal ballista tower. It seemed like people were taking a long time to walk over there, so a road would make it go quicker. Of course, right when things were going perfect, King Banta had to come over and complain about my dragon statue. He told me to destroy it or it was going to affect our relationship. Honestly, he didn't have a single say of what I could and couldn't do in my own kingdom. So of course, I told him to go back to his island. King Banta was clearly butthurt about this. His diplomats didn't even leave my castle and they were kind of just sitting there for a while. I ended up getting back to work on my island. I tried to deforest some areas to make space for building. I honestly didn't touch the forest though that the witch was living in because I figured it would make her even more mad. I then built a really long road to the sea, put down another forester, built some palisades around my ballista tower, and chopped down some more trees. I started preparing some more troops for the war, and then out of nowhere, Queen Mazenberger had delivered her own troops to my island. She hadn't had an assault in quite a while, and honestly it was pretty weak for building up that long. After taking care of her troops with ease and strategy, I sold some fruit to the merchant ship of King Banta, and then I tried to expand my palisades around my ballista tower. Unfortunately, the architects of my kingdom told me that I wouldn't be able to build wooden structures taller than three stories. This made sense as the structure might be unstable. So, I obviously upgraded the walls to stone. The witch was finally willing to talk to me, and she demanded that I gave her a lot of ingredients for an expensive potion. I didn't have these materials, and honestly, it was enough materials to supply a whole city. There was no way I was going to give her anything. This was definitely going to make our relationship go more downhill. The coastal ballista tower was looking tall and mighty. It could even barely reach Queen Mazenberger's island. This is going to be overpowered. My spies, <clears throat> I mean uh, diplomats, in Queen Mazenberger's castle had informed me that a dragon was attacking it. This was good news because I wanted to see her downfall, but she handled the dragon with ease. Right after, it was my turn to take down a dragon. One of them rushed my castle, and they didn't even try to attack any of my towers, which was kind of surprising. King Banta then came to my castle asking me to send some troops over during the next Viking invasion. The Ballista Tower was finally complete. It was picking off one of the enemy archer units slowly but surely. Honestly, I would consider this a success because this was definitely going to take out a lot of enemies. I even ended up building the tower a little bit taller and then building a second Ballista Tower. Only one year remained until the next vigorous Viking assault. I sent over two archers to help out King Banta as he requested. I started construction on a new subdivision by placing down a house and then some roads. That was when all of the vikings started rolling in. They seemed really coordinated for this assault as they were sailing in a perfect straight line. That's pretty hard to do. The giant vikings were able to destroy one wall, but it was a wall right next to my gate. I honestly don't understand why they didn't take down the gate. I then continued building the subdivision by placing another house and then I traded with King Banta's merchant. Every subdivision needed a well, so I placed one down just in case a fire would break out. They also always need a clinic. Everyone gets sick at least one point in their life, so I placed down the clinic right next to the well. Queen Banta was pretty smart. She moved all of her troops outside of the AoE of my tower. Unfortunately, this kind of pissed me off because I wasn't going to be able to hit any of them if they were standing right outside of the range. I did however build a road directly to the tower, so that way I could station troops on and off the ballista a lot quicker. King Banta decided to send a gift even though it wasn't really a time of need, but hey I'm not going to complain about another free gift. I wanted to experiment with archers and boats. Obviously if I had a bunch of archers on a bunch of boats, they'd be able to take care of any knights that would be sitting on land. I landed one of my archers on Queen Mazenberger's island as bait. Well, that worked very well. 
I then moved my boat into a position where the archers could only shoot the knights, but they couldn't be attacked by a tower or other archers. Hmm, this is going to take a while, but it definitely could do a lot of damage. My troops were recalled, and they were sailing back to the island. I then checked on the witch to see if she was willing to talk and negotiate. Unfortunately, she was still mad after requesting a whole city's worth of supplies. Out of spite, the witch used her magic to make all of my citizens slower. Well, that wasn't very nice. The kingdom of Vortia was now recognized by all nations as a bustling city. We definitely are expanding. Thank you to all the subscribers out there. I ended up sending some more troops over to Queen Mazenberger's island to take out the knights that were just sitting at the edge of it. I wanted to keep the economy growing, so I put down two more apple orchards. And that was when a giant red dragon had shot flames over Queen Mazenberger's island. It must have liked my dragon statue and decided to help out. Let's just go with that. I built a new cemetery and then destroyed the old one as I didn't want dead bodies sitting inside of the castle. The Vikings arrived at full force. Unfortunately for King Banta, they liked picking on him. There were only two Viking units that landed on my island. One of them was able to set one of my manors on fire, but we put it out right away and took care of them. It's always a good idea to have a lot of wells. Now that I had some more troops trained, it was time to send them over to Queen Mazenberger's island. I wanted to attack the peninsula again. Although these little flash attacks weren't going to do anything to really hurt her, it was probably very annoying. As my troops sailed to Queen Mazenberger's island, I started replacing some of my roads with stone roads. I then started to surround my new subdivision that I was building with wooden walls. I didn't want Vikings getting easy access to it. My flash attack began with my swordsman taking out one of Queen Mazenberger's buildings. This was purely to lure over any of the enemy units nearby. Once the enemy units came over, I got my troops back on the ship and sent in my archers. It was now the archers job to take care of any of the enemies that were just sitting there being useless. These attacks weren't super effective, but I definitely was going to keep doing them until I built a large army. My troops kept luring over more and more swordsmen, and then they slowly picked them off at range. I know my castle was very heavily fortified, but I also needed to care about its aesthetics. I started placing down as many walls as I could to fill any gaps and make it look nice. I ordered some more trees to get cut down and then I traded with Bant's merchant. My troops had finished taking out as many of the swordsmen that they could. I then sent them to go and explore near Queen Mazenberger's secret part of the island. It looked like she had a whole civilization over here that I didn't even know about. The area was too hot to keep exploring, so I got my archers out of there and sent them back home. Once my troops arrived back at home, I realized that King Banta had sent another diplomat. He was just saying thank you for helping him out with the last Viking invasion. I then built some wheat farms and watched King Banta send his troops to get senselessly slaughtered. I don't know why he would send them right into that death trap. My building spree then continued. I destroyed a house and then built two more of them. I also threw down a whole bunch of walls. A Viking catapult unit rudely interrupted me while I was trying to figure out more buildings to place. I sent my knights over to give them a warm welcome to the island. Once I had my peace and quiet, I tried placing a Noria. It seemed like you could only place them on certain areas of the coast, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I placed one down though, and I ended up building a tavern as well. I also threw down a library right in the new subdivision area I was building. I went to go check out the housing area inside of my castle. I moved one of the manors back so that way I could build a lot more buildings. That was when the witch casted a plague upon my city. Unfortunately it seemed like quite a few people died, but we had a lot of good doctors and took care of things. When I said building spree, I wasn't joking. I then built a well, a library and then planned out an area for a new gate, and I put a bunch of stairs around my kingdom just so that way people could get onto the walls easier. I had destroyed one of the outer walls and put a gate right where I was planning it. I then put a fish preparation station because I wanted my citizens to have a more balanced diet. 
Also, it would make them happier. It seemed like a lot of the housing areas were already having an increased amount of happiness. I then placed down some more wooden walls, built a fisher hut, and encountered some more vikings and dragons. It's weird to think that vikings and dragons was becoming a norm in this world. I did fight them off all the time, however. Unsurprisingly enough, King Banta asked me to send over some troops before the next viking invasion. I then placed a marketplace in the center of all the houses that I was building. I had gotten this strategy from a loyal citizen named Snowy. They knew a lot about city building, so I definitely was going to take their advice. Wow, my army is starting to really build up. I built some more roads to make the island more accessible, and then some more wheat farms so that way we'd have more food, and surely enough, I destroyed the dragon statue so that way I could build a bathhouse, something that my citizens had been requesting. King Banta sure would be happy. Having a bathhouse means that you have to have a steady source of water. So, from Minoria, I built some aqueducts to go straight to the bathhouse. Unfortunately, they were kind of blocking the road, which was a little bit awkward, but people could still walk on the road. I knew I needed more archer towers around my island. So I found a location, sent some archers to take out the wolf dens nearby, and then built one. Alright, well that's enough building inside the city. My people seemed pretty happy, and they were getting even happier. So, it was time to focus on my fleet, and military. King Banta must have known my plan because he sent me some supplies to get started. I had to put down a stockpile because I was getting way too many resources. Oh, and also there was a barbarian invasion going on. Some of my walls caught on fire, but it really wasn't a big deal. The time had finally come. I had a decent amount of troops, and I knew that I could deal some damage to Queen Mazenberger's city. I knew if I wanted to do any real damage, I would have to train even more troops. But I wanted to get my current ones in the field and start doing damage to get my revenge on Queen Mazenberger. Once the boats were loaded up, they headed out to her island. I wanted to employ the same strategy that I used before, sending in some bait and then taking out the enemies with my archers. Everything was going according to plan. King Banta had even sent over some troops while I was attacking. This is going to be good. Well, it could have been good, but sadly, King Banta had sent his troops into the same death trap that he did the first time. My archers weren't close enough to assist yet, so it seemed like a lot of his troops ended up dying before I was even able to get my forces near. He did, however, have two catapults still on the island. This was a dub. I let off a unit of my swordsmen, and they started raiding houses. How do things feel now, Queen Mazenberger? I honestly had secured a landing spot for me and King Banta's troops on the island. Any enemies that Queen Mazenberger threw at us, they immediately got nailed by my arrows. I traded with Banta's merchant to get more gold, and then I started training some more troops. At the same time, I sent one of my diplomats over to go talk to King Banta real quick. Unfortunately, he got really upset with me and said that I didn't help out in the last Viking invasion. I honestly did not have time for this, so I headed back over to Queen Mazenberger's island and it looked like there were a crap ton of corpses all over it. The war was taking its toll. I then loaded up the swordsmen that I was training on a transport boat and started to send them over to Queen Mazenberger's island. The troops made it there slowly but steadily. They also took some arrows from the enemy archer towers on the coasts. But now, my troops were reinforced, and it was time to start doing more damage. I rushed my swordsmen to the shore, and a bunch of enemy swordsmen made their way over. We had a clear advantage because I had so much archer's support. The enemy swordsmen didn't last for long, and they all just started to run away once their troops got low on health. Unfortunately, I overextended. My soldiers had been lured in by some enemies, and they got taken out pretty quickly. I knew that it was time to retreat because I was going to need a much bigger army if I really wanted to take on Queen Mazenberger. I watched my troops sail back to the Kingdom of Vortia, and wow, did they look cool. Once they had arrived, a lot of them returned to their post on the castle wall. They were celebrated by all of the citizens and got a good returning home. More Vikings decided to roll up to our islands, and King Banta attacked Queen Mazenberger with another assault. He had a decent amount of troops, but it wasn't going to be enough. 
I wonder how far he's gonna get. My army wasn't the biggest army out there, but they definitely did look very cool. Immediately when I got my troops back home, King Banta had sent a diplomat asking me if I could help him out in the next Viking invasion. I of course agreed. I then had my diplomat go around and scout out Queen Mazenberger's island to assess the damage. I sent some troops over to King Banta's island to help out with the remaining Vikings. That was when two ferocious dragons came and attacked my castle. One of them got very low and started flying away. He escaped with almost no health and then the second dragon lit one of my archer towers on fire. The nasty beast continued its assault on my castle and lit even another archer tower on fire. Both of them had been completely destroyed by this point. Despite all the damage that the dragon caused, it fled. I don't know if it was scared or what, but it was completely gone and I no longer had to deal with it. I made some city renovations like placing out a marketplace and looking for an area to create a new subdivision. I also built a well in an area that wasn't really covered by water, just in case anything ever caught on fire of course. It was time to start loading my troops back up into the transport ships and send them out for round 2. I had recruited even more troops and it was time to send them out for a second assault. I had 6 ships ready to depart and go and attack Queen Mazenberger's island. Of course, that's where I sent them to. This was a lot bigger than any attack that Queen Mazenberger had ever done herself. She usually only sent three full ships. She couldn't do anything about these six that were heading towards her island and were about to cause a whole bunch of damage. Attack! I beached my swordsmen and made them start attacking the one tower closest to them. It seemed like Queen Mazenberger was prepared and had a whole bunch of archers and swordsmen ready to fight. I then told my swordsmen to get back onto the ship and a huge archer war had broken out. Arrows were flying like crazy, and I was winning because I had a lot more archers. Who would have thought that archers would have been this powerful? Queen Mazenberger had sent over some catapults after I had taken out her infantry and arrowmen. It seemed like these were kind of her last resort, and they honestly weren't doing anything. Once the catapults were dealt with, I sent my swordsmen in to start attacking their theater. An archer tower was covering that area though, so I had to retreat them pretty quickly and refocus on objectives that weren't covered by archer towers. Queen Mazenberger had been producing more units and it looked like she was sending them over one by one. This was not the smartest idea on her part as I just mowed them down when they arrived. Having catapults was overpowered. They were able to destroy buildings from far away without even having to take damage themselves. I went back to check on my island and sold some items to King Banta's merchant. I realized that I was running out of gold. This was due to my excessive military funding. These troops costed a lot in maintenance, not gonna lie. I knew that I was gonna have to send the rest of my troops back home. Unfortunately, I needed a better economy to continue this assault. I sent my catapults in to try and do as much damage as they could before we had to depart. King Banta also had one catapult on the island and I have no idea where it really came from. But I wasn't gonna complain and we were just destroying buildings together. I'm sure Queen Mazenberger was getting very nervous as we were destroying buildings right outside of her first wall. Luckily enough for her, King Banta started retreating his catapults, and I started sending mine back to the boats. It was time to head back to the Kingdom of Vortia and replenish my troops and build our economy so we could host a bigger army. My diplomats were talking to King Banta and he got very mad at them. He said that we didn't help him out in the last Viking invasion which was very weird. He had just asked us to help him out in the next Viking invasion, but it didn't even happen yet. We still had one more year to help. As good of an ally King Banta is, he started to confuse me honestly. My troops had arrived home, and I noticed that we had almost no money, and the happiness went down like crazy. I told my workers to start working in the aqueducts, so that way the bathhouse would turn back on. That would make everyone a lot happier. I then told my troops to retake their original positions on the walls. I was planning on healing them, but I couldn't heal them all at the same exact time. Sure enough, it was time for the Vikings to come and attack us. I sent my troops to actually go out and face them. It seemed like they were trying to avoid my island again. My archers made it to the coast and started lighting up a random Viking boat. We got its health super low, but unfortunately it escaped. This time the enemies were running from us. They didn't want to even see our power. The economy was struggling. 
we had almost run out of money completely. So I knew that I had to disband some of my troops to get some citizens back and get them working jobs that would produce more money. In addition to disbanding troops, I also sold some of my items on King Banta's merchant ship and then I told my men to stop manning their archer towers so that way they could do some more jobs helping the economy. Things were getting desperate so I even disbanded two of my catapults so that way I had more workers. Sure enough, with all the precautions that I was taking in my city, the happiness started to rise again. I started to catch a break. A giant red dragon had been flying past one of my towns and we had all noticed it because of its loud roars. Thankfully, one of my ballista towers was able to shoot it down and I sent some scouts out to go and grab all of the meat that it dropped. This would surely help out my happiness temporarily. I also tried resetting up my merchant ship, but for some reason I couldn't figure it out. I had items being brought to the docks, and then I told my merchant ship to pick some of them up. King Banta had sent over another diplomat, and he was mad at me again. He said that I didn't help him out in the last Viking raid, but then he said that I did help him out with something else, so he was happy again. He was honestly going kinda crazy. Once my merchant boat had arrived at King Banta's dock, I stopped it and tried selling goods. Unfortunately, things weren't working out, nothing was selling. I was going to have to talk to some of my advisors to figure out what's going on and what I was doing wrong. I then once again traded with one of King Banta's merchant ships, and I knew that I needed to make improvements in my city so that way it could produce gold a lot more efficiently. So I started off with some infrastructure. I started upgrading a lot of roads to stone, so that way people would be able to travel a lot faster through and outside of my city. The witch was finally willing to talk to me, and she requested a decent amount of materials. This time I actually had them, so I had my citizens start bringing them over. I then started to think, and I realized that when we killed dragons and got their meat, my citizens became very happy. So it would make sense to put down a pig raising farm, and that way I could use the pig meat to make my citizens even more happy. In addition to the new pig farm, I placed down a butcher shop and then started destroying some trees to expand my castle near the witch. Hopefully she doesn't get too pissed about this. I scouted out Queen Mazenberger's kingdom and how many troops she was building with my diplomat. Honestly, she wasn't making that much progress. I then placed down another manor and another pig farm. Also, I placed down another wheat farm to make my pigs eat more food. This way, they'd produce more meat. Some vikings started to attack, and I sent some archers out to go and help King Banta, and I honestly just planned on keeping them there because I knew that he was going to keep complaining and keep asking for help. It just made sense to have them stay over there. The vikings weren't a challenge, and I was able to take them out with my archers and towers with ease. They honestly weren't scary anymore. King Banta had also sent over a gift for helping him out. I came up with an idea of wrapping my whole island with stone walls. This way, no enemies could even land on it and I could just sink their boats before they even got close. This was an extremely large project, but honestly I had a lot of stone and I had the means to do it. I started to dislike the idea of having a graveyard right next to my food production. So I moved the cemetery over to the other side of the castle. It was near a bunch of residential houses, so it made more sense there. I connected some roads, upgraded my food storages, and even built some more walls along the outskirts of my island. I continued a bunch of upgrades here and there, and I honestly was just doing a bunch of waiting for my builders to construct everything. Things were going smooth and my happiness was definitely increasing. It's always a good feeling when you know that your kingdom is flourishing and you'll be able to build a bigger army. After the constant attacks from King Banta and I, Queen Mazenberger prepares her army bigger than it's ever been before. But do not worry, we will build our defenses higher and stronger than they've ever been. Starting with our economics and then our physical defenses. This kingdom will be the strongest kingdom ever to live. Thank you guys for 10k subs, I, I mean citizens. The plan to walling off the entire kingdom was going accordingly. The only problem was, the kingdom was too small to take on such a big project in such a short amount of time. So I ordered the construction of more manors to house any new citizens willing to join the cause. Of course, the manors came along with a well, clinic, library, and small marketplace to keep everyone happy. 
The upgrading of stone roads were also put into play, as we needed to keep the infrastructure of our castle up to par. More people also means that we're going to need more food. So I placed down a wheat mill and a bunch of wheat farms all around it. It was finally time to take care of some random caves that surrounded a stone that I could be mining for precious materials. The kingdom was also running low on charcoal, so I restarted all of the charcoal making efforts. That was when I was informed the grumpy witch was willing to talk to me. She requested 293 gold and I instantly sent it to her because I wanted to unlock some of her special spells. She'll definitely be useful when fighting off Queen Mazenberger. I then started to construct another statue. I thought it would only be fair to the people because we had to knock down our dragon statue. It was also time to fully remove the graveyard near my food production area. Now that's just nasty. Some of Queen Mazenberger's troops arrived at my shore. It seemed like she was trying to attempt a revenge attack. That wasn't going to work. My defenses were way too strong and her troops were way too weak. As expected, I mowed them down and she even sent one to retreat back to her island. I then built another granary as wheat was flowing in and I wasn't able to store it all. King Banta's merchant ship had also sold me the special technology improving my archer tower's damage by 25%. This is going to be overpowered. King Banta had sold me that technology at the perfect time. The Viking horde was invading. I saw three giant ogres, two Viking units, and a catapult sailing to attack my castle. Notice how I called them ogres this time. One of my loyal advisors had informed me that they were not giant vikings, but they were in fact ogres. Hey, it's hard being the strategist on the battlefield, I don't get to see the enemies up close. However, the vikings had set some of my walls aflame. My brave archers stood in the flames while still shooting arrows at the giant ogres attacking my walls. Acts of valor like this should be awarded, so I planned on hosting a feast for these soldiers in the near future. After taking out the catapult, another viking axe unit had landed on my island but immediately started to retreat as they saw all of the arrows come pouring down on them. They had ran off my island in less than 10 seconds. Now that's how you know you got good defenses. Unfortunately, during the last raid, some of the giant ogres had taken out a few of my aqueducts. These were very expensive to repair but I needed them for the bathhouse. I then built a blacksmith and talked to King Banta's diplomat, which they were asking me if I could send over some more troops to help in the next Viking raid. I had finished repairing my aqueducts, increased the max amount of builders allowed in my kingdom, and watched the farmers collect my food yield for the year. Things were good. They were so good in a matter of fact that I placed down another couple manors. Unsurprisingly, a giant red dragon who was almost already dead made its way over my castle. My people weren't even scared at this point and were so used to it that we took it down within a matter of seconds. We're all gonna be eating good tonight. Which that reminded me, having more food variety means a happier population. So I built a swine herd and then a wheat mill with wheat farms so that way we could keep the pigs fed. More of Queen Mazenberger's troops had made their way over to my coast. It seemed like she was attacking a little bit more than usual, so it was time to ready the defenses and build them even taller. Right as the troops landed, I immediately mowed them down and we had taken them out in a matter of seconds. With good defenses and a fast response time, I did what any other logical king would do. Build more defenses! Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more! I made my way over to the witch again and paid her over 800 gold. This allowed me to unlock my very first spell, which fed everyone right away. Queen Mazenberger's troops kept coming, but I kept sinking her ships and taking out any units that she threw at me. I also was able to afford the two ballistas that I needed to place now. There were going to be a total of six defenses on the front side of my castle. Nothing's getting past these. One of my advisors had informed me that the wood stocks were dwindling. So, I started building a couple more foresters who would provide the wood that we needed. 
the newly constructed ballistas had been put right to use as enemies approached my coast. I then built another swine herd and a couple more wheat farms. I had been placing so many ballistas that I forgot about archer towers, so I threw a few down. The kingdom of Vortia's economy was doing astonishingly well, at least compared to earlier, so it was time to invest in some research. Researching productivity and better military technologies was the only way that we would be able to grow even faster. So sure enough, a great library had been put into my builder's construction queue. All this talk about better productivity and output made me upgrade my roads to stone. Well, now that I just spent all that stone, I need more. So I started clearing out some empty caves right next to a stone rock that I could build a new quarry on top of. Sure enough, it was my favorite time of the decade. Viking invasion time. It was time to see how quickly we could kill all of the invading Vikings. This honestly was becoming a competition between Queen Mazenberger, King Banta, and I. I definitely wanted to win for bragging rights, so I sent my archers out to the coast, and they immediately started dealing some damage to the few enemies that made it onto my island. It seemed like the Vikings kept landing on a specific side of my island. I walled it off so they wouldn't be able to land there anymore. King Banta had then sent over a diplomat with a bunch of beer. He said that his niece had brewed it, and it would mean the world to her if we were serving it in our great kingdom. I was a little bit skeptical that there might be poison in this beer or some infection to get my people sick. Eh, it's King Banta, he wouldn't do that. The witch had then reached out to me, asking for money so she could buy ingredients for her potions. Since I wanted to unlock more potions and get on her good side, I sent her the 150 gold. I then noticed that all of the caves were gone from around the stone, so I built another large stone quarry. One quarry was already giving a lot so having two meant that I was going to be swimming in stone. I wanted to see how the seagate would work, so I placed one down and started experimenting with it. That was when I noticed a really weird white-looking dragon in front of Queen Mazenberger's base. It actually ended up being the regular colors that it normally is, just it was taking so much damage from the archers. This is not going to be an easy invasion with all of those defenses. I had to keep up with Queen Mazenberger, so I continued walling off some of my island. It also made sense to build another house and start my research. I already had one completed from King Banta's merchant ship, but I started on another which was going to improve my ballista damage. It seemed like the Great Library was going to be an important building, so I decided to wall it off from the rest of my island. It was a good thing I had that thought because Queen Mazenberger had sent some troops over and there was one very close to it. Luckily the walls were done and I was able to take out the enemies pretty quickly. It seemed like the Kingdom of Vortia was pretty happy at 75 happiness. They did however want more taverns, so I placed one, and then I noticed that I was getting low on charcoal, so I was looking for a spot to put another charcoal maker. Before actually placing it though, I needed to put wells all around, just in case any fires broke out. We wouldn't want the whole city to burn down now, would we? King Banta started to have one of his delusional fits. He started saying that I didn't help him out in the last Viking raid, when my troops were literally still on his castle walls. I honestly didn't understand that, but whatever. I think that the witch had then picked up on some of King Banta's insanity. She asked for an insane amount of armor and tools, more than what my city uses to function. At least the research was going along normally. I wanted to improve my castle, and the first thing that I came up with that was kinda annoying was that the Vikings kept attacking my wooden walls and setting them on fire. So, I started replacing some of those wooden walls with stone walls, and then walled off some more of my coast. Since I had such loyal citizens, I wanted to reward them by putting down a jousting arena. So I started to clear out some space, and see where it would fit. It was already time for the next viking invasion. There was only one giant ogre this time, and a bunch of viking troops. So I sent my archers to go deal with the viking troops, and then the ogre was taken out by my ballistas pretty quickly. Unfortunately, the Vikings acted like kids, and set some of my walls on fire and then started to run. I wasn't going to let them get away with this, so I sent my archers to go and get them. They got super lucky because there was another giant ogre that I told my troops to handle instead of chasing the rest of the enemies. Well, that's not going to happen again now. I made the order to cut down some trees along the rest of my coast. This way I could put more walls where the trees were covering. I placed down more apple orchards, 
and then I saw these Vikings abduct some of my loyal citizens. Unfortunately, my archer tower wasn't able to take them out quick enough. My whole island was pretty much surrounded by walls now. It would almost be impossible to raid me. With more secure parts on my island now, I could build more houses to house even more citizens. My goal by the end of the 400 days was to have at least a thousand. I then sent the witch some more supplies, took down a black and orange dragon, and started some research on improved building techniques. Alright, that's enough infrastructure. I'm going to start moving on to more agriculture. I needed some more food to sustain a bigger population, which is what I was shooting for. So I put down another butcher shop, two produce storages, and a granary. There was so much building and construction going on in the city, you could see that all of the citizens were rushing through it with all the materials needed. I don't think that we had done this much construction since the 100 to 200 days. Sure, it's not as exciting as if I were to send a bunch of troops over, but these are necessities that needed to be done in the city so I could actually be able to go and send over a bunch of troops. As I do with every residential area, I put down a well, clinic, library, and marketplace. This way, all of the new citizens that join the city stay happy. I was getting really low on supply storage, so I built stockpiles where I could. That was when I noticed that King Banta was having an all-out assault on Queen Mazenberger and her city. It looked like he was dealing some real damage, and he had a significant number of troops. Too bad mine weren't ready to go invade yet. I really had to think about the saying, patience is a virtue, because if I were to send over my troops now, I'd have a lot of fun with it, but they would get slaughtered, and I wouldn't inflict any real damage on her city. Enough talk about war, we'll be getting enough of that later. King Banta sent over a diplomat, and he asked me if I could send him resources to help him build a blacksmith. I needed to get our relationship back up after his last fit, so I decided that I would send the resources. After placing down another ballista and building some more homes, I made a little clearing in the woods. This is where I planned on putting another charcoal maker as well as a stockpile. Since the clearing in the woods was pretty far away from my castle, and I also had a ballista tower in the area, I built stone roads to make traveling there a lot quicker. Viking invasion time! I was able to sink one of the Viking ships as it sailed past my island. This was pretty impressive because it had a lot of health and it went by really quickly. It seems like my island had become the new target for the Vikings. More and more ships were heading nearby to drop off troops on the little entrance that they made in my walls. Now this is what I call an invasion. There's more enemies this time. It was kind of nice to see more troops attacking my island. I had built all these defenses and I wanted to see them get put to use. The remaining Viking unit on my island decided to retreat. They weren't going to do anything anyways and couldn't inflict any real damage. So I honestly didn't blame them. I then headed over to my library and started research on improved bread ovens. It was a very cheap upgrade to do, but it was also going to be very beneficial because I would be able to produce more bread for my citizens in a more productive manner. The witch had then requested a bunch of items. I honestly didn't even have enough. So I wasn't going to send them and I was going to sit out this request. I was honestly so confused, because what could she possibly be doing with all of these materials? She could have built her own city by now with this much. I delivered the gift to King Banta as he requested. He had sent quite a few to me in the past, so I never felt bad sending him one. Also I needed to improve our relationship, so this worked out really well. A path in the trees to build a wall had finally been cut out, so I started placing down my remaining walls in the back side of my castle. This way, I could build more housing area. It also seemed like a good idea to add a layer on top of the current walls I had. The Vikings were destroying the small wall that I had on my coast, so double layering them would make it a lot harder for the Vikings to get through and actually onto my island. King Banta was inquiring about my bathhouse. That sounds a little bit weird, but he was trying to see if he should build one for his own people. I gave him the advice that they're wonderful and he should. Maybe all the gifts that he sends over are because I provide him with good advice. Now is the time for a challenge. A giant red dragon was flying past my island, and I wanted to see if I'd be able to take it out with all my defenses before it got to the other side. It did look possible, but after a little while, it looked like the dragon was going to escape past my island with such little health left. Ugh, King Banta, what are you doing? The happiness in my city was going down a bit, my people wanted more taverns, 
so I destroyed a wall near the residential area and placed down a large tavern because that's the perfect location next to all of the houses. To further increase happiness, I was looking for a spot to place down a cathedral, and then I actually did place down a fishing hut. I began research on stronger sails because I needed my boats to be able to transport my troops a lot quicker. This was one of the necessary steps I needed to take to prepare for the upcoming invasion on Queen Mazenberger. After a few more new constructions and upgrades in my base, it was already time for the Vikings to invade again. The Viking invasion was a lot less impressive than the last one, as there were almost no Vikings trying to invade my castle. Queen Mazenberger did however send some troops, but they didn't even make it to our coastline. After the invasion, I built a new ballista tower, and then started training some archers and a catapult. It was time to prepare for war. While I was waiting on the training of my troops, I ordered some more trees to be cut down for extra wood. I then sent the witch some supplies as I wanted to unlock the rest of her spells and see if they would be helpful for invading Queen Mazenberger. All of a sudden, a giant red dragon had soared over my castle. They weren't even able to make it to the end of my island this time as we took it out as soon as it got over the bathhouse. I guess that's how you make dragon stew. Immediately after, King Banta had sent over one of his diplomats. He asked for supplies so he could build a cottage. He honestly should be building manors, but I guess it's his decision. Troops kept rolling out of my military buildings. I had two new swordsmen and two new catapults. More were on the way. I wanted to experiment with the docks to see their potential. So I built a little area with a fishing hut on top of it, and it worked out just as planned. If I'm able to fit walls on the docks, I could even have my island have a much bigger coastal wall. I obviously continued making residential, infrastructure, and agricultural improvements for the castle. I still needed even a bigger population. I had delivered the gift to King Banta, and then I talked to the witch to see what she needed. Once again, she had crazy demands. That was when, you guessed it, another Viking invasion happened. Through the little forest that I had in the back of my castle, a couple of Vikings had snuck in and set some of my wheat fields on fire. This was incredibly annoying, but it seems like this was their only intention, because once they set the fields on fire, they started to retreat out of my castle. Luckily enough, these fires didn't do too much damage, and I was able to put them out pretty quickly. My treasury was almost completely filled, so it was time to build a few more large treasuries. This way I would be able to store a lot more gold, and I'd even have more tax collectors to collect more taxes. King Banta coming in clutch again. I started fixing some of the holes in my walls and upgrading my main castle walls even higher. I then placed down some docks to place walls on top of. This way I would be able to wall off the witch's hut and secure that part of my coast. I then placed some more wells in case of a fire hazard, added some more apple orchards, expanded one of my walls, and got recognized as a humble kingdom in all of the lands. Once again, my people were complaining because they didn't have enough taverns. So I built some in the areas that the people were complaining at. This would clearly increase my happiness. I also realized that I had over 1,000 citizens. I wanted to move my graveyard away from the agricultural area again. It was just building up, and I knew that it would be unsanitary to have it there. So I moved it to one of the corners of my castle. I wanted to expand one of my castle walls so I could fit more agricultural buildings inside of it. So, that's exactly what I did. A pretty large convoy of Viking ships started to sail past my coast. My ballistas were shooting at them, and they were shooting at my castle walls. This was a pretty cool scenario, not gonna lie. I luckily was able to sink one of the Viking ships in the back of the convoy. It sunk pretty easily. One of the ships in the front also had almost no health. We were able to take it out, and it sunk right before it got to my coast. Some more enemy ships had pulled up and dropped off another ogre, as well as more vikings. The viking units started to run to the side of my castle, as there was still a little gap in one of the walls. I sent my archers to go and hunt them down, and take them out before they would even be able to get in and set anything on fire. My archers got the job done at the perfect time. As the expansion of my castle wall was completing, I placed down a granary, two produce storages, 
as well as three swineherds. I then started adding docks and walls so I could wall off the little areas of my coast that haven't been yet. I also created this cool little pocket that allowed water to keep running, but also have it walled off. It was now finally time to give the witch her last delivery. I unlocked the last spell, and it was basically just a spell to kill all of the dragons. This honestly wasn't worth it because I could just kill the dragons myself. I had such good defenses after all. I started getting complaints that the bathhouse in my kingdom was getting too crowded. So I built a new one in the newly developed agricultural area. This seemed like the perfect spot to build one because I had a lot of houses near it. I also placed down a reservoir and attached an aqueduct to it. This way I could have flowing water and it would be easier to water farms that I build in the area. I built another blacksmith because I wasn't producing enough tools and armaments to keep training troops and have my facilities running. Once my docks were complete, I finally started building the walls on them. I built them out of wood because it seemed like that's the only thing that you could build on them. But then I realized I was wrong and had to replace them with stone walls. I had to replace the fishmonger that I removed earlier. I placed one down and then I also placed down a butcher's hut. Strangely enough, a random staircase in my base was destroyed. But that encouraged me to go around and start placing down even more staircases as it's important for my troops to get up on the walls quickly. My navy honestly wasn't that strong. So I started building four more boats so I could fit all of the troops that I have on them. I also placed down two more tax collectors as well as another graveyard because I needed to have a graveyard on both sides of my castle. I wanted to place a noria right next to my main agricultural area. This way I'd be able to provide more water to my crops. Unfortunately, it didn't let me place one where I wanted to build it. So I just rewalled off the area and continued like normal. I wanted to check out what the witch had for me because I had unlocked all of her potions. It seemed like she was just requesting more items, and I honestly wasn't going to give them to her. I didn't have that many anyways. Another Viking invasion broke out. It looked like a large convoy was going to be going right past my castle, so I knew I was going to have to start doing repairs on my walls. This was incredibly annoying, so I was hoping that the ballistas would be able to take out these ships as soon as possible. What the heck are they doing? Is this a water show or something? They're like doing tricks and flying past each other. Weirdly enough, a different convoy had dropped off troops in front of my castle. I don't understand why the first one just didn't do it, but who knows. I ran some aqueducts to a new reservoir that I had just built right next to my new agricultural area. Things were going so well in my castle, I decided that it was time to expand even more and build more housing. I was ecstatic because we reached our goal of a thousand citizens. But I thought to myself, why stop there? So I continued building another eight manors to increase my population to around 1200 hopefully. I then sent King Banta a gift just to make him happy and keep our relationship solid. I also checked in on the witch and she was a little bit mad at me that I didn't give her the materials from her last request. That was when King Banta came and he wanted to tell me a funny joke. Well, I don't know if it was really funny or what it really was honestly. But you can just read it for yourself. I don't want to say it because it's kind of cringe. I didn't want to be rude to King Banta, so I told him that I liked his joke. I also wanted to be good to my citizens and troops, so I hosted a feast to celebrate the archers from earlier, as well as celebrate the troops that were going to be heading into battle soon. I also started on the training of even more troops. I was producing troops like crazy. I now had five catapults, five knight units, and a whole bunch of archers. Ooh, Viking invasion. I get to test them out. Sheesh, that was so quick. If it was impossible to raid my castle before, now it's really impossible. The witch had requested some more gold. It wasn't that much, so I sent it to her because I had a whole bunch. I wanted to keep good relationships with her, and I also didn't want to lose my spells. I also thought it would be a good idea to build a jousting arena. This way the different heads of houses in my kingdom could compete. I think King Banta might even send some knights over to compete as well. This would definitely increase happiness in the kingdom and make our relationship with King Banta's kingdom even stronger. Wow, this is probably going to be the coolest building that we have in the whole kingdom. The time has come. I started loading my troops into the different transport boats that we had. This way, they would be all prepared to sail over to Queen Mazenberger's island. I wasn't sure if my economy could fund even more troops, 
so now was the perfect time to start getting them over to Queen Mazenberger's island. I loaded my archers first, then catapults, and then knights. The time has come for the big invasion. My troops sailed their way to Queen Mazenberger's island. What seemed like peaceful waters wasn't going to be for long. The invasion fleet of Vortia made its way over to Queen Mazenberger's island. As that was going on, more troops were being trained to serve as reinforcements. I was willing to spend any amount of resources to take out Queen Mazenberger. She was the original aggressor and the one who started the war, so it was time to give her what she wanted, a fight, and one to remember. The invasion began exactly on day 400. I planned it out to be three different phases. The first one entailed my archers and catapults sailing as close as they could to the island. This way they could take out any resisting enemies, archer towers, and any other buildings that got in our way. I kind of thought of this phase as clearing a path for my troops to land. I wanted the second phase of the invasion to be landing the troops and taking out any building that stood between my army and the castle. Finally, the last part of the invasion would be breaching the castle walls and taking out Queen Mazenberger's keep. I wasn't going to just let my troops go into this invasion blindly though. I had my spy, <clears throat> I mean a diplomat, give us intel on all of the enemy's positions. This intel could be incredibly useful as I would know exactly when the enemies try to counterattack. Back at the kingdom, another transport ship was completely filled with archers, so I sent it over to help out with the invasion. My forces really needed them, as my diplomat saw a whole bunch of enemies inside of Queen Mazenberger's castle. They were definitely going to be a handful to deal with, so the more troops that I had ready to take them out, the better. Phase 1 was going super successful. My troops had already taken out a good chunk of buildings on Queen Mazenberger's peninsula. They had also taken out around 3 archer units, 1 catapult, and no knights yet. It seemed like Queen Mazenberger was trying to send over her archers each time I would target her archer towers. This way she would have more firepower to do damage to my units. Honestly, I'll give her that one. That's a pretty decent strategy. However, the only way that this would be effective is if she sent over more than one unit at a time. I checked back in on the castle, and it looked like two more catapults had been built. Once one more was operational, I could send over another ship to help out with the invasion. Speaking about catapult units, the ones that were currently in the invasion were doing a great job. They had taken out all of the buildings on the peninsula and were now moving more inland. I had my soldiers focus in on taking out the bathhouse and other buildings that would make her citizens happy. This way, they wouldn't want to hold out for as long and they would submit their kingdom to me. Right when I thought the invasion was going well, a viking invasion occurred. Honestly, this would help me out a little bit more if I go and take out the rest of Queen Mazenberger's towers so the Vikings could do more damage on her island. That's exactly what I ended up doing. I sent my troops over to take care of a few more archer towers, and that was when Queen Mazenberger had sent some troops to confront me by boat. It ended up only being a drive-by, or I guess in this case, a sail-by, and her troops had just continued over to King Banta's island. Our third catapult ship had arrived near Queen Mazenberger's island. It immediately joined in with the other ships on the bombardment of rocks. You could tell Queen Mazenberger was getting nervous seeing three full ships of catapults because she had sent over a night unit to try and take them out as they were very close to the coast. Of course these knights were light work and she was going to have to do a lot better than that. It was about time that I start landing troops on the actual island so I started to rally my forces. I tried luring out some of Queen Mazenberger's troops by sending my catapults close to the shore again. She definitely wanted to take these out as soon as possible, so right when I brought them in, a bunch of enemies had made their way over. I set up my archers right before the catapults, so that way they could take out any enemies that got close. This plan was extremely successful. While we were preoccupied with the troops that Queen Mazenberger was sending over, some of her citizens started sneakily rebuilding the structures on the peninsula. 
This was clearly a last-ditch effort to restore their economy, manpower, and production that they lost from the destroyed buildings. Too bad this idea was never going to work out. It seems like Queen Mazenberger was getting desperate now. She had sent over a boat with a bunch of troops on it. It was clear that she didn't know how to handle our invasion, so she was trying out absolutely every strategy that she could think of. Unfortunately for her, my commanders and I had everything planned out. I even had a way of luring her swordsmen out to the coast by sending my catapults in to be vulnerable for a second. All of her troops would rush over and try and take them out. That's when I sent in my archers and they would annihilate the enemies. Almost a full year had gone by and Queen Mazenberger was still sending troops to engage with us. She wasn't going to be able to hold out for much longer though, not at this rate. Things were looking even more promising. Three additional catapults were heading over to a ship and getting ready to board it. It would only be a matter of time until they arrived at Queen Mazenberger's island. It appeared that they would be accompanied by a bunch more knights and archers who were also going to make their way over there. It seemed like even the dragons didn't like Queen Mazenberger. One was heading over her island, getting ready to attack it. I didn't get to see it do any damage because Queen Mazenberger had sent some troops over on another boat and I had to deal with them really quickly. It was time for phase two. My knights had started landing on the peninsula and they were immediately accompanied by some of Queen Mazenberger's troops. They rushed over in an effort to stop us, but were taken out with ease. This inspired some of my knights to be so confident that they started chasing some of the enemies back to the castle. Obviously, I ordered them to pull back as I didn't want to take any casualties that we didn't need to. Once the coast was clear, I ordered my knights to go and destroy the buildings that were rebuilt. It was time for the archers to start landing. I placed my knights in a strategic position so that way if any enemies were coming to the peninsula, they would encounter them first. I then started landing my catapults after all of the archers had made it onto the island. It seemed like Queen Mazenberger was relentlessly trying to send all of the troops that she had left. There weren't very many of them, and when they got here, we just took them out right away. This wasn't a good idea on her part, but that means we have free reign to destroy any building that we want. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more. The formal invasion began. It started off with the troops targeting the only tower in the area. We then moved on to pillaging absolutely every village, farm, and any building at all that we came across. Queen Mazenberger was relentless when we first went to war, so now it was time to return her the favor. My revenge plan consisted of one thing and one thing only. Complete and utter chaos. The only thing that wasn't chaotic was how I planned on causing that chaos. My goal was to clear a straight line from my perspective on the left side of the island. We would stop right before the castle walls. And then we would start clearing out to the right. And that's exactly what we were doing. We took out so many buildings, you could see Queen Mazenberger's economy collapsed. Once we made it just close enough to the wall to where the ballistas couldn't hit us, my troops started to clear towards the right. To make things more interesting, a Viking invasion started to happen. There were only three enemy Viking units that landed on Queen Mazenberger's island, but I know back home in the Kingdom of Vortia, they were fighting off a decent amount of Vikings. Unfortunately, I had to focus on this battle because I didn't need to lose any of our troops. Everyone back home will be fine. They got this. To my surprise, King Banta had sent over some troops. I was very surprised that he actually coordinated something with me in war for once. Usually he just sends in his troops and they get demolished. But this was actually very helpful. I now could completely relax about my left flank. Things were now getting very exciting. We had almost cleared enough buildings to start attacking the main castle walls. This invasion was going to be intense. We needed all of the troops that we could get. So I started training more back home, and I sent them over to the island while my other troops patiently waited. Once all of the troops were rallied up, the knights and archers made their way in to take out any of the enemy archer towers that remained. The catapults followed slowly behind. I was using my knights as tanks for the most part, as they were absorbing a lot of the arrows and damage. My archers stayed a little bit further away and were shooting arrows at anything that came into their sight. 
it was finally time to start attacking the castle walls. I focused on taking out all of the ballistas and archer towers that could shoot my troops first. Well, at least most of them. And then we started destroying one of the castle walls. This way my troops would be able to pour in and start doing damage to the keep and taking out any of the other ballista towers. My troops had breached the castle wall. The second the wall came down, my troops ran in there and started destroying a building. I told them to focus on taking out the ballistas and archer towers first. Obviously, if we can't be killed when destroying the keep, then this would be a lot easier. My knights and archers were suffering heavy casualties. There were a million archer towers outside of the castle walls, as well as a few ballistas that were still remaining. Also, Queen Mazenberger's keep had four archer towers on top of it. They were dealing a decent amount of damage to my troops and changing the tide of the battle a little bit. I was starting to get a little bit nervous, but I was sending out all of my troops, as many as I could at least, to attack the keep. My catapults were still slowly pouring in, but they were going to get there soon enough. Once the catapults were finally in position, I had them start pelting the enemy keep. If we could just destroy this one building, we would be able to get to Queen Mazenberger. My only concern was that the catapults were taking on a lot of damage, but it also looked like Queen Mazenberger's keep was taking on a lot of damage, so it was a race to see who would get destroyed first. You have to be kidding me. My catapults ended up losing the fight. Queen Mazenberger's keep prevailed. However, it was only at 68 health points. So I started training as many units as I possibly could and started getting them ready to go and finish off the keep. There was obviously a time crunch going on here. If I didn't get my troops over to that island and start dealing damage as soon as I possibly could, Queen Mazenberger could possibly rebuild. She even just repaired one of her walls. Thankfully her economy was in shambles because of all of the buildings I destroyed, but there was still a huge time crunch. I was able to quickly put together three archer units and send them over on the boat. Queen Mazenberger was building up another army, so I used the same strategy that I used before, keeping my archers on the boat while trying to lure out some enemies and taking care of them. I needed more armaments, so I placed down a blacksmith. We were going through them left and right by training all of these troops. The archers on Queen Mazenberger's island had taken out all of the enemy units. They could now start dealing damage to the buildings. I sent a boat right next to King Banta's island to pick up my troops that I left there to help him out with the Viking invasion. They were needed at Queen Mazenberger's island a lot more than they were at King Banta's island. Even though it didn't feel like it, things were going pretty smoothly and I put together an army pretty quickly. My catapults had touched down on the island and I knew that it was getting close to the time to start invading. I just needed a few more units. I noticed that there was a diplomat sitting in front of my castle. It was one of King Banta's, and I started talking to him. He mentioned he was watching the war with Queen Mazenberger. Clearly, he wasn't participating in it. He said that he didn't like what I was doing, and that I should make peace with her. I was going too harsh. That was too bad for him, because there was no way that I was going to make peace now, especially when her keep was almost destroyed. So I told him no, and then he betrayed me. He made peace with Queen Mazenberger, and declared war, on the kingdom of Vortia. If we were under any pressure earlier to destroy the keep, now we were under extra pressure. So I knew that I needed to start sending my troops in soon. Once another catapult had landed on the island, I decided that we needed to act now, before King Banta sent out troops to help out Queen Mazenberger. So I sent my archers and knights in to take care of any of the remaining archer towers. Once they were destroyed, I told everyone to focus in on the keep. Things were getting very nerve-wracking because it looked like Queen Mazenberger's keep was right about to be destroyed. I even accidentally clicked on it with a diplomat and thought that it was destroyed. It had finally happened. We beat Queen Mazenberger. I ended up exiling her from the kingdom and told her to get lost basically. The people of the lands recognized me as the new king. It was going to take them some time to get used to. I'm sure it wouldn't be too long because we were now officially recognized as a thriving kingdom. Right when we gained control of this new land, a Viking invasion started to happen. There was no chance to even celebrate. I had to send all of my troops that I had used for sieging the castle to take out the enemy Vikings. While all of this was going on, 
I was having a hard time processing that the war was over. It had gone on for 333 years. Now that is a long war. I honestly was also going to miss Queen Mazenberger. Maybe I should have let her stayed, but then again, I wouldn't have gained all of this land. I was going to miss all of the times that she tried to attack my castle. Now who's going to try and invade it? I guess there's King Banta, but I've seen him attack, and honestly, is not that impressive. Alright, that's enough talk about politics. I noticed on the new island, my people were very unhappy. I guess most of their homes, and all of the production and manpower that they used to have, is now gone. That is partially my fault, but we were going to rebuild it back and better than ever. First things first, I had to construct a new graveyard. After that big war, we obviously needed a lot of graves. Sad to say. We also needed defenses in case vikings and dragons came by. So I started placing down a couple ballistas. I also started renovating some of the farms that had been recently destroyed. The key to anybody's heart is food. My people also demanded that we build a bathhouse. So I did what they commanded and placed one down. A lot of the people in the New Island were suffering from trauma from the recent war. You really can't blame them because a lot of them were displaced and a lot of people they knew had passed away. I wanted to provide them with all the things that they needed to be comfortable and start becoming happy again. I was responsible for their current situation, but I was going to build it back bigger and better for them. Luckily enough, the quality of life and economy on my main island was really good. So I was able to kind of just let it be while I focused in on the new island. The best thing that we had going for us on the new island was that all of the buildings were pretty structurally sound. King Banta had sent over some of his first troops to try and attack us. Why would he send over one ship? Did he not just see what happened? Was he not paying attention for the last 400 years? I then placed down a dock where Queen Mazenberger used to have the old one. This way I could import supplies. I also placed down a stone quarry, and that was when a big red dragon started to invade my castle. We didn't have too many ballistas, so there was a good chance that it could actually do some damage. Thankfully, we did have a lot of archer towers, which did most of the damage. Another dragon had come by right after the red one was taken care of. It burnt down a few of my buildings and an archer tower, but luckily we took it out. The dragons were low-key a blessing and a curse. They're annoying to take out, but they provide a lot of special food that makes the citizens happy. Even though we weren't going to be needing it anytime soon, I started placing down a manor subdivision. This way, when the kingdom was ready to expand, it could. Strangely enough, King Banta had sent over a diplomat. He already was proposing to end the war. This was honestly kind of hilarious. He ended up sending over one ship filled with enemies, and once it got taken out, he sent over a diplomat to end the war? That's wild. I accepted King Banta's request, and then started to send over a ship delivering a bunch of stone to my new island. Nothing too crazy really went on for the next couple years. I was waiting for the economy to stabilize, and that was when a viking invasion happened. They started attacking my main island, and it looked like they were making good progress. I haven't seen vikings make it this far in a long time. That meant that my castle walls were either way too weak, or the vikings were getting stronger. After taking out one wave of them, even more arrived on my island. Since Queen Mazenberger wasn't here, I now had to deal with even more vikings. I started to do what I'm famous for and build more walls. I also built down some more defenses, but the walls are what was important. I even started doing a second layer on my outer coastal wall. This way the vikings wouldn't be able to destroy it as quickly. Happiness was hard to come by on the island of Helsbeck. That's what Queen Mazenberger named it, and I didn't want to change the name just yet, because I didn't want to end up making the people mad. Who knows how they'd react to the renaming of the island that they live on. I started prioritizing certain jobs over the others. This way, I would be able to put all of the jobs that make people happy first. 
I then watched a jousting tournament happen on my main island. It was pretty cool. I had a great idea of placing a cathedral on my island. These increase happiness in a pretty big range, so it just made sense to place one down right next to all of my homes. Another Viking invasion happened. It seemed like we just had one. Are they coming more frequently now? Whatever, I ended up just having to deal with defending two islands, which honestly wasn't the most easy thing. I had to use my mobile troops on the new island, and my defenses were good enough on the old island. Get out of here. I figured, why stop with the cathedral? So I started placing down another statue that also increases happiness within a certain range. You could see that the cathedral was definitely increasing the happiness of my citizens, so it made sense to put down another structure like it. A few dragons were spotted. And of course, they started attacking my new island. Later on, they did make it to my main island where they were killed, but of course, they would target my new island first. King Banta had then sent over another diplomat. He wanted me to help him out by sending troops over to help with the next Viking invasion. He also requested us to be allies again so we could send troops on each other's lands. I built an upgraded charcoal maker and then started clearing out some forest on my main land. That was when even another Viking invasion happened, and this time I was able to help King Banta out with my one archer unit. Once the forests were cleared out on my main island, I constructed another manor subdivision. This way, I would be able to have even more people. My goal was to have at least 2,000 on my main island. My kingdom was hosting a pretty large jousting tournament. King Banta even heard about it, and wanted to send over one of his knights. It was a little bit embarrassing, but King Banta's knight won and became the champion. It did improve our relationship though, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I started placing down all of the necessary buildings I needed around my manors. That was when a few years flew by, and nothing exciting happened except for a dragon invasion. The new island, which I was now calling Large Vortia, did a pretty good job of almost taking out the dragon right away. Its defenses were clearly improving. I also had this genius idea of hosting a feast to improve my citizens' happiness. It was clearly working because I was now at 85 happiness temporarily. I now planned on hosting feasts right when the benefits from the last one had gone away. This way our happiness would be incredibly high and we would keep bringing in brand new citizens to come and live in the kingdom. Sooner or later, the happiness should just naturally stay up that high if we have a lot of buildings producing happiness. So I won't need to host feasts, but until then, I'm gonna have to. Another one of King Banta's diplomats arrived at my castle. He thanked us for helping him with the last Viking invasion, and my relationship with him increased a significant amount, more than usual. Another Viking invasion had broken out. It looked like most of the enemies were going towards King Banta's island, but a few of them did manage to make it onto Large Vortia. I ended up sending my troops and they immediately retreated away. I continued working on the new housing area on the island of Vortia, and then I tried placing a Noria inside of a moat. It still functioned like it normally does. This could honestly be utilized pretty well. On Large Vortia, I placed down another archer tower and checked the structural integrity of all the buildings. It was getting even better with the new mason that I had. King Banta had then reached out to me, asking for new trade prices, since our last trade agreement had ended from their previous alliance. I wanted my defensive layout on Large Vortia to be similar how it was on Vortia, so I started building a pretty large wall around the whole island. As usual, another Viking invasion happened. There were quite a few enemies this time, but nothing we couldn't handle. I then reinforced my walls even higher on my main island where the enemies kept breaking in from. King Banta then sent over a diplomat asking for help with the next Viking invasion. It seemed like he really struggled with Vikings, so it made sense that he was always asking for help with them. I then started walling off the rest of Large Vortia. I also started repairing some of the infrastructure, and I upgraded a lot of the regular roads to stone roads. My food piles were also a little bit lower than they used to be, I had over 2,000, so I started placing down some more farms. 
That was when I got notified that our kingdom was now recognized as a dignified kingdom. I placed down a blacksmith because I needed tools for some of my operations. That was when one of the giant red dragons set flames to the farms that I had just constructed. Well, that's annoying. King Banta then sent over another diplomat with even more gifts. It seemed like he was on edge and kept sending me these gifts because he was afraid of what he did during the last war. He knew that he wouldn't be able to take me and ended up being very nice to me again. He always was a pretty nice person, but it was just kind of interesting to see him declare war and then immediately back out of it once the odds were fully against him. You know things are going well when your only concerns are Viking invasions and dragon sightings. We now no longer had to worry about Queen Mazenberger, and there wasn't any economy issues going on in Large Vortia. From here, it seems like there's only one path that we can keep going on. Growing bigger and bigger. It's honestly going to be a lot to manage, but having two islands now is going to make the kingdom so large and so powerful that nothing will ever get in our way again. I built some more wheat fields on Vortia, and then a bunch of foresters on Large Vortia, as we were running low on wood. Things were coming together, but I definitely needed to optimize the layout of Large Vortia. I'm honestly starting to regret destroying so many different buildings, but now we get to build it up in our own way and make sure that it's perfect. Large Vortia continues to prosper as its citizens diligently build up its economy, infrastructure, and agriculture. Despite the long-term trauma from the war, everything else was going well. The citizens even expressed how happy they were under my rule. It was almost as similar as the happiness levels in Vortia itself. Speaking of Vortia, since the war ended, it was now time to improve the standard of living and the convenience of living in it. I could tell that the citizens were getting a little bit salty as Large Vortia was getting all this new construction while Vortia was getting none of it. Well, that's now all about to change. Since the new city is more stable now, I can focus in on improving both. These improvements are starting off with a new farm. The food rations have been getting a lot lower in Vortia as the population had been steadily growing. Also, now knowing that you could use moats to power Norias, I ended up placing some down. This way I could remove the aqueducts that were taking up too much space. I also had come up with another large and ambitious plan. I wanted to surround my whole island with docks, so that way I could extend my walls even further. Well well, look who's back acting like nothing even happened. King Banta had returned, and he wanted to discuss trade prices. I wasn't really planning on building a really good relationship with him again after what he did. So, I just kind of went along with it and made him happy, but I don't know how long this friendship could last. While the negotiation was going on, a huge Viking armada had made its way over to Vortia. The Vikings were coming down on us with full force. It looked like there were over 10 different ships. Now that's what I call a lot of Vikings. The invasions that were going on for the last 200 to 300 years weren't that impressive. They weren't making any progress in destroying my castle, and they honestly weren't getting any loot from it either, so they were just wasting troops. It appeared though that even sending more Vikings and even stronger units wasn't going to be enough to deal any real damage to my kingdom. After dealing with the Viking invasion, I started to clear out some trees and put down some more foresters as my wood stockpiles were very low. I continued placing more farms on Vortia, and then I reworked the whole wheat field farms on Large Vortia. I figured if I'm reworking the agricultural area, I might as well build some more moats and a new Noria. That way the soil will be a lot more fertile. Obviously I had to make sure that the water was accessible by all the farms, so I threw down a reservoir right behind the Noria. It provided water for all of the farms in the nearby area. This was pretty clutch. Back on the main island, I ended up moving one of the Norias once again. I saw some potential in saving even more space by removing the aqueducts that led to it. Dragons! As we were accustomed to, two large dragons started attacking our islands. The giant red fire-breathing one 
had made its way over to Large Vortia. Thankfully, I had a lot of ballistas set up in place as they took him out instantly. On the other island, the black and orange dragon had attacked one of our ballista towers. It set it on fire and actually ended up destroying it. Strangely enough, once the tower was destroyed, the dragon had made its way over to King Banta's island, where it was later killed. My people weren't going to let the destruction of one of the ballistas phase them, so we started construction on some apple farms in Large Vortia. It only made sense to put them near the water reserve that was currently feeding all of the wheat farms. To make things easier for the farmers, I placed down a granary and produce storage. This eliminated the need of having to haul the food all the way across the island just to store it. King Banta was sending over another diplomat. It looked like they were carrying a gift, and I was the only other kingdom to exist, so obviously it had to be for me, right? I guess we'll never know. I started to get distracted by castle upgrades, and I honestly ended up forgetting that he even sent over a diplomat. On top of all these upgrades, a viking invasion broke out. That definitely contributed to me forgetting that there was a diplomat sitting at my doorstep, but hey, I'm supposed to be mad at King Banta after what happened. Well, 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 that looks like a promising viking invasion. For once, the enemy forces looked pretty significant. A whole armada of viking ships landed their troops on my docks. I actually got to see some enemies make it near my castle walls for once. That doesn't happen often. Unfortunate for the vikings, they still didn't send enough troops to deal any real damage. Once the invasion started to clear up, I just continued building like nothing even happened. Now that's a little bit embarrassing. Some of my royal citizens had then suggested that I rename Large Vortia. I ended up renaming it to Greater Vortia. This sounded a lot more official and even cooler. Now obviously I won't let any good favors go unrecognized. So I decided that I would build a theater in honor of the citizens who recommended the name change. As the construction of the theater began, I also started construction on a large reservoir back in Vortia. This way I would be able to provide some more water to my city. I honestly wasn't going to need two Norias right next to each other, so I knew that in the future I could destroy one of them. Vortia was becoming so big that I had to destroy some of the forest on it. This wasn't ideal, but at the same time, the only way to keep expanding and growing was to clear out these forests. I could use them for houses and more food areas. In the meantime, I noticed that Greater Vortia was only producing wheat, apples, and very little fish. There was no pork. So I started construction on two different swine herds. On top of that, I also started to fortify some of the walls. One single layer of walling was not going to be enough to protect me from the Vikings on the Greater Vortia. So I had to make sure that there was more than just one layer and we actually had good defenses here. Unfortunately, it seemed like there were quite a few areas on my island that weren't walled off at all. Vikings could just land there and start raiding with no resistance. So it was really time to start filling those gaps and continue fortifying the walls. Wow, who would have thought that things could be so peaceful? We had been at war for more years than we hadn't been. Now that's really crazy to think about, and it was now time to enjoy our peace. Oh, of course right when I had to say that. Three fierce looking dragons had made their way onto the island area. Thankfully, the giant red one that we normally see had been taken out right away over Vortia. A black and orange one, as well as a small little orange one, had made their way over Greater Vortia. We had taken out the small orange one almost instantly, as it seemed like it was the weaker one. The black and orange one, however, made its way to one of my ballista towers and took it out. Thank god they're not that expensive to rebuild. Sure enough, after destroying one of my ballistas, the black and orange dragon had made its way over to King Banta's lands. Unfortunately, I wasn't going to get the kill and get all of its meat. But it's whatever, I guess King Banta needs it more than I do. Hmm, speak of the devil. King Banta had sent over a diplomat, and when I finally talked to them, he was pretty mad at me. He had informed me that his diplomat had been waiting there for quite a long time, and he was super mad about it. Honestly though, he wasn't in the position to even get mad at me. He had literally turned against me 
in the middle of a war that he promised to fight with me. Now that's just low. After fighting off all of those dragons, I had placed down a forester in the middle of the inner walls of Greater Vortia. It seemed like I had a very good opportunity to get some extra wood, so I might as well capitalize on it. Once the forest area was cleared out back on Vortia, I placed down some moats, planned on building a Noria on them, and then placed a large reservoir. Sure enough, right when construction started, I started hearing smashing against my walls. I went to go look, and another Viking invasion had broken out. It felt like these were coming way more often than they used to. It had also looked like they were only going to King Banta's island. This was pretty hilarious, not gonna lie. I only had to worry about two Viking units while King Banta was fighting off the whole Viking army. He did have a lot of troops, but it looked like they had to retreat back to the castle. That was when the rest of the Vikings started pillaging his houses and actually started doing some destruction to them. I was surprised that King Banta's defenses weren't good enough to even prevent the Vikings from dealing a lot of damage. The giant ogres even almost walked from one side of the island all the way over to the castle. Now that's just embarrassing. As the Viking raids started to clear, I expanded my dock by quite a bit more. It looked like I was burning through a whole bunch of wood, but I might as well go all out for this. It was my next big project after all. What started to seem like a common occurrence, King Banta had sent over some more diplomats. Once again they were holding a gift, but he didn't deliver that gift to us. He also claimed that I was supposed to help him out in this last invasion, and I didn't. I don't even remember agreeing to that, and why would I? I then started to seriously question my building decisions. Why would I build only one small reservoir when I could build one large reservoir right next to the Noria? That way more water is pumped through the lands. Honestly, what's even the point of the small reservoirs? I had then also noticed that a lot of the fishing docks surrounded by regular docks were no longer functioning. It seemed like they needed to be at the very end. I didn't understand that because it's a dock and you should be able to fish wherever, but who knows. All of this dock building was running my wood supplies dry. So I threw down another forester in what remained of the little forest area on my island. Since Greater Vortia wasn't completely closed off yet, I decided that I should throw down some more archer towers and ballistas. That way, all of the Vikings could be handled if they try landing in the gaps. Once I saved up a little bit more wood, I placed down another forester on Vortia as we really needed it desperately. Wow, the dock is really coming together. Nothing beats the end of the decade dragon invasion. This time, there were only two dragons that invaded though. This was a little bit weird because I saw three of them last time, and it seemed like these dragons were even weaker. I thought they were supposed to get harder as time goes on. Look who it is, again. I wonder if this time I'm actually going to get a gift. I doubt it though. I wonder if he's just doing that as a psychological tactic to make me want to be friends with him just to receive my gifts. Well, there's only one way to find out. And of course, not a gift. King Banta had asked me to help him out with the next Viking invasion. I told him no, as I didn't feel like helping, and he honestly didn't deserve it. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. After seeing that the happiness level in Greater Vortia surpassed the one in Vortia, I knew that it was time to expand. Having too large of a population can decrease the happiness in a town. So, that's why I was taking it super slow with Greater Vortia. As we had just recovered from a giant war, and the people were still suffering from its trauma. Well, apparently not anymore. I continued building the new neighborhood, expanded my defenses, and then saw King Banta take on a whole Viking invasion by himself. I don't know what it was, but the Vikings weren't even thinking about coming to my island. I wonder why. It had been two or three years since I requested the foresters be built on Vortia. Unfortunately, they weren't yet. The Noria also hadn't been constructed. This large dock project was definitely taking away from my town a little bit, but it seemed like the people were still very happy, at 100% happiness. While looking through the different buildings, I had realized that I didn't have a keep in Greater Vortia. So I placed down an outpost, the closest thing that I could build, next to a keep. 
I further wanted to improve the diet of all citizens on Greater Vortia. They had been through a lot with the war, so I wanted to make sure that they had all of the food varieties that they possibly could. King Banta had then sent over a diplomat to complain more. He told me that he was going to close trade with our kingdom because we weren't friends anymore. Honestly, that was fine with me as we were fully self-sufficient. It also meant that war was going to be coming soon. I ended up walling off the main dock entrance where all of the enemy vikings were getting onto my island from. This way in case King Banta declared war and tried to attack from that angle, it would also be walled off now. After starting construction on a new neighborhood where the old forest used to be, King Banta had set over yet another diplomat, even though one had just left my island the previous year. Hmm, I wonder what he could possibly want now. When I started talking to him, it looked like he was requesting materials to build a manor. This had to be some kind of trick, because he was just telling me how we weren't friends. But I figured that I would play along with it, so I started preparing the gift for him. While I was busy ruling my kingdom, I didn't realize it, but Greater Vortia was under attack. There was a Viking invasion going on, and my walls had been breached. I was pretty upset that I hadn't been informed about this until the very last second, when the enemies had made it inside of the walls. This prompted me to further wall off any more gaps that were left on my island. I don't know why I was taking so long to do this, but now was the time to finish it off. Let's get to work. In addition to the new walls, a large reservoir was built on the southernmost part of my island. I had also placed down some stockpiles all the way on the other end of my island near the peninsula. This way, when I built production buildings there, my people wouldn't have to run all the way across just to drop off some goods. It seemed like Greater Vortia had a lot more wood than Vortia. So I built a path into the forest and placed down another forester. It might not seem like it, but wood is probably one of the most important commodities that you could have for raising a kingdom. I then ended up putting down a road and placing two more manors off of it. It seemed like I didn't have enough space to place a road fully going around the manors, so I ended up destroying some of the trees and walls that were blocking where a road would be. Good thing my giant dock project was almost finished on this side of the island. I could now free up a lot of space that was earlier being consumed by the walls. King Banta had then sent over a diplomat to ask me if I could send him some materials to build a manor. I was already sending him one gift, and I decided that was enough, so I told him no. My diplomat had then arrived at his island with the gift, and when I brought it there, it seemed like he had no recollection that I told him I would bring it. He made it seem like this was just a random gift, which it wasn't, we discussed this earlier. Then, in an effort to get more wood, I placed down a road with two more foresters at the end of it. Oh no, a dragon's attack in King Banta's lands, I feel so bad. King Banta wasn't able to protect his citizens from the giant red dragon plaguing his town. It was even able to fly all the way across his island and towards the beginning of mine, where I finished it off and killed it. Somebody's got to build more ballistas. Speaking of ballistas, I ended up building a really large one on the coast of my island bordering with King Banta's island. That way he could see troops over his walls and even shoot at them if need be. I even realized that I could build the ballista even closer to King Banta's island on the dock that was soon to be. So I started construction on that portion of the dock a little bit early. Upgrading this ballista and moving it over a bit gave me inspiration to go upgrade the rest of the ballista towers in my kingdom. It now made sense to expand my dock a little bit more since I was collecting a decent amount of wood. And when I say a little bit, I really mean a lot. I started working on the large tower that faced King Banta's island. That was when I realized two giant ogres had made it into my castle. Wow, they didn't even stand a chance. I really needed to finish my dock soon, as my walls were too thin and vikings were able to break through them with ease. So I started working more on my dock and even fortifying the wall a little bit, but it was only going to be temporary because the wall needed to expand outward. King Banta had then sent over a diplomat asking for some help with the next viking invasion. I figured I would tell him yes just to make him happy as the relationship was getting really low. Greater Vortia honestly needed more defenses. 
So, near the keep walls, I placed down two more towers with ballistas on them. I guess it's technically the outpost walls, as there's only an outpost in the middle, but you guys get my point. Not too long after that, I came across one of the oldest citizens in my kingdom. Their name was Mary, and they were 99 years old. Now that's what I call a long life. To be honest, I really shouldn't be talking though. I had been alive for over 560 years at this point. Well, there goes all my wood. I had realized that a lot of my buildings I was placing were all for functionality. It was time I start working on a little bit of aesthetics. So I placed down a well and surrounded it by gardens. This should surely be enough, right? After I got my first look at the garden, I then headed over to the side of the castle near the peninsula. I started building some more manors as I wanted to make this residential area a lot nicer. I had also thrown down some more functional buildings to keep the people happy who lived nearby. I didn't really anticipate too many people walking on the roads near these houses. So I replaced one of them with a garden path just to make things a little bit more aesthetic. The time had come. I was now able to wall off the docks on Vortia. This was going to be a game changer as the enemy vikings wouldn't have a single spot to land. They would only be able to land where I'd want them to. So I could in a sense set up a death trap that they think is the only way that they could get onto my island and boom, a viking death trap. There was still a little bit more dock that needed to be built but it wouldn't take that much longer as we had the resources and had the manpower to get it up quickly. As expected, two dragons started to fly over Greater Vortia. This time, they didn't last more than 5 seconds each. All of the ballistas were able to do enough damage to take them out in that little amount of time. Honestly, it had really been a century of building. I was making improvements for both castles every second that I got. It wasn't as exciting as if there was a war going on, but building and improving things is always fun too. I had honestly forgotten about the witch. That was when I headed over and started to redeem my very first potion from her. I got double the tree yield. So my foresters would collect even more wood now. I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but this was actually really useful. After speaking with the witch, I placed down a cathedral, as everybody wasn't happy that I just bought a potion from a witch. Buying the potion had also caused me bad luck. A whole bunch of vikings came to invade, and this time they came full force. A couple of giant ogres had made it to one of my gates on Greater Vortia. They ended up destroying it, but luckily we took them out in time. Back on Vortia, a huge collection of vikings had broken down one of the walls, and they made it inside of my castle for the most part. This was very unfortunate because there was five or six different viking units who made it inside of the walls. My citizens were freaking out as there were vikings not too far away from them. Luckily they didn't make it into the second layer of walling though. So most of the people were safe and all the vikings had got taken out before they got to any houses. After the raid I started finishing off the dock on Vortia and the little housing area near the peninsula on Greater Vortia. Hmm, why is King Banta building up all those troops? I hadn't even considered it yet, but King Banta had betrayed me once, what are the odds that he would do it again? It seemed pretty likely as he was building up a large army. He could just be building them up to handle the Vikings, but at the same time wouldn't you just build up your defenses then? Unsurprisingly enough, I had fended off another dragon invasion. I had then built a large reservoir and it even helped King Banta deal with some vikings. This was only to get on his good side, as his army was starting to look bigger and bigger. It was starting to look like King Banta wasn't the one who needed help fighting off the vikings. Greater Vortia had been invaded, and two of the walls had been breached. This was really unacceptable. So, I started placing down some more archer towers at the main gates that the enemies come from. I even planned on expanding the walls to be even bigger. Speaking of walls, I started building even more of them on the dock in the land of Vortia. I was placing so many walls, it started to look like a huge cluster. I could have built these in a more organized manner, but it's whatever. 
Surprisingly enough, King Banta had sent over a diplomat to tell me how appreciative he was for the help in the last invasion. It was pretty weird because our relationship had shot up very high just because of that one event. I then checked in with the witch, and it seemed like she no longer requested any payments. This meant that I could now buy any spell from her at any given time as long as there's no cooldown. I no longer had to pay just to see the spells. I really liked the dock idea that I was doing on Vortia. So I started to replicate it a bit on Greater Vortia by starting construction on some docks. The only thing is I had a whole bunch of fisher huts that would no longer be usable. Back on Vortia, I was now able to make the walls a little bit thinner. Any area that had more than three layers, I shortened down a bit. This ended up saving a decent amount of space that I could now build new buildings on. Uh oh, that's a lot of Vikings. A Viking invasion broke out, and all of the enemies had rushed one of my fishing huts. I didn't really think about this, but Vikings could still land on them and they could easily start destroying my castle walls. Hmm, so I'm going to have to get rid of all my fishing huts maybe. We'll deal with that later, let's just take care of the Vikings. As the Vikings made their way closer to my inner wall, they immediately got shredded. I also commanded the rebuilding of the walls before any more enemies had made it onto the dock. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get them up before they made it. Three different ogres were all marching towards my inner walls now. This wasn't going to be good. The ogres had made it to the first gate leading towards my keep. They had been taken out, but they did a decent amount of damage. That was when I noticed some more vikings land in my main dock area and start attacking the walls. This inspired me to move my dock a little bit more out and start fortifying that area a little bit better as well. That viking invasion really was a wake up call for me. I started fortifying the walls even more as I didn't want them to be breached so easily. It was also time to start preparing my transport ships as I planned on training a whole bunch of troops and had a very good scheme that came to mind. Hmm, what do you know, my relationship with King Banta just decreased. Oh, there it goes down again. It's starting to look like I might have to prepare for revenge after all. Every single year that passed made me think about King Banta's betrayal. There was only one thing on my mind, and that was revenge. However, I wasn't going to rush into anything. If I had learned anything from my war with Queen Mazenberger, it was to take a calculated and prepared approach towards war rather than rushing into it. And that is exactly what I planned to do. I wanted to build up my defenses and raise a huge army before invasion. That way, I could take out King Banta and his forces within a single year. Well, looks like it's time to get to it. And of course, upgrading my infrastructure along the way too. Hmm, <sighs> it's almost like these Vikings know exactly how to annoy me. Whenever I start big projects around the kingdom, they always seem to invade. It's almost like there's a traitor among us. Hmm, that can't be it. It must be King Banta. There's not even any Vikings attacking his island right now. They only came to mine. There were also quite a lot of Vikings. They were attacking my weakest points of the castles, almost like they had been given information of where they were. After fending off all of those Vikings, I had spotted an area in Greater Vortia that seemed super inefficient. So of course, I had all of the buildings removed, and then I created a little housing area that just made a lot more sense. It also would increase happiness, as well as increase the population, so we could trade more soldiers and fill more jobs. Towards the back of the subdivision was a little iron source. I had built some docks and planned on expanding the walls, so that way I could build a pretty large iron mine and start extracting iron. Well, that's going to be a tight squeeze, but it works. While expanding my walls onto the docks, I had noticed that the devil himself was reaching out. No, I'm kidding. It's just King Banta. He had gotten upset that I had taken so long to answer his diplomat, and then he proceeded to ask me for resources to build a blacksmith. Of course, he was asking for more stuff. 
even after his nasty betrayal. I told him yes, I would be willing to help out, because I didn't want him to think anything was up. If he even had the slightest idea of what I was planning, then he would probably prepare all of his troops and make a million more towers. It was time to recall one of my diplomats who was hanging out on King Banta's island. This diplomat happened to be named Sir Moose. I had told him to go pick up the materials that were being prepared at the Hall of Diplomacy. Soon after, I realized that I could finally place down my iron mine. I unfortunately had to destroy some of the road just so I could place it, but it honestly looked pretty good there. And I was going to be getting a lot of iron from it, so why not? I then placed down a large tavern next to the iron mine, as well as a couple apple tree farms next to all the houses. This was pretty nice because it allowed the citizens to be able to walk out their front door and pick some apples to eat. King Bant is not going to be getting through these defenses. Oh, I mean, uh... These are some peaceful walls for peaceful times. Even though it seemed overkill to keep building up more walls on that side of the castle, King Banta would be striking from there. And my whole thought process was, if that's where the enemy troops are going to be coming from, why would I not have a bunch of ballistas to take out the boats before they even land? Honestly, I wonder what King Bant is thinking. I'm over here planning an invasion on his castle, and I wonder if he's doing the same to mine. While I was lost in my thoughts, a dragon had started attacking one of my ballista towers. It took it out completely, but we took care of the dragon completely. As the new neighborhood in Greater Vortia had finished constructing, I decided it was time to place down some more food production areas next to it. This was honestly the most ideal place to put down some farms. The reason being is that there were two neighborhoods that surrounded it so all of the people could get their food from there as well as there was a theater adjacent to it. And everybody knows, whenever you go to the theater, you're going to want to have snacks there. So having farms right next to it is ideal. Geez, it feels like there's always just a Viking invasion going on. It wasn't even that many years since the last one. At least it felt that way. This time though, it looked like the Vikings had come prepared. One of my gates was already almost destroyed, and the Vikings had just landed. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and subscribe for more. The first wall has been breached. All my archers were raining down arrows at the enemies who made it in to the first layer of my castle. My knights even made their way out to start fighting off the giant ogres so they weren't able to do too much damage to my inner walls. Right as I started rebuilding, more enemies had landed. Thankfully, there weren't too many of them, and my archers and towers were able to take them out pretty quickly. Meanwhile, in Greater Vortia, it seemed like the Vikings were just landing. The wall on this island wasn't as big as the one back on Vortia, so I had a lot more concern for this island's protection than Vortia's. It seemed like there weren't too many Vikings, only four units to be exact, so I was able to relax a little bit. After the Viking invasion, I realized that I needed to fortify some of my outer walls on Vortia and just my walls in general on Greater Vortia. So that's exactly what I started to plan out. I wanted to wall off the weak spots first. So I started walling off the areas that I know the Vikings usually like to invade at. I then started walling off the last gap on Greater Vortia. I had a bathhouse placed in the most inconvenient spot possible. I couldn't place any walls there so I ended up destroying it and destroying some of the pathing too. I figured while I was remodeling, I might as well place the new dock location as well. This was then followed up by the placement of walls to create the new entrance to Greater Vortia. Well, 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 look who it is. King Banta had sent over some diplomats. I tried to be courteous and offer them some bread. Of course, they ate it and then complained about it. This was incredibly insulting as I had given them free food and they were going to just eat it and complain? King Banta had then even gotten more mad. He said that he had been waiting way too long for the gift that I was preparing for him. This was unfortunate because I honestly did forget to send it over. It was prepared and everything. Well since I ended up making it for him I might as well send it over to his kingdom anyways. So that's exactly what I did. Before his diplomat even made it back to their castle, I had my diplomat drop off the gift. 
It seemed to make him a little bit happier, and it increased our relationship by very little. Well, since all that diplomacy is done, time to get back to making more defenses. I ended up placing down two Greek fire encampments right at the front gate of Vortia. I purposely planned on making this area a little bit weaker with walls, so that way the Vikings would always attack here. Having the two fire encampments paired with the ballistas and archer towers was going to be way too overpowered. So, all the Vikings would funnel into this little area on my island, and then the defenses would take them out instantly. Since I had recently destroyed a bathhouse in Greater Vortia, it seemed like my citizens wanted it replaced. That was very fair. So I started planning out where I could build another one. Sweet, another Viking invasion. I was honestly excited for this invasion, as I was able to see my Greek fire encampments be put to use. They instantly melted the two ogres that had landed on the dock and tried to attack my walls. I think they were killed in less than three seconds. Now that's what I call a good defense. Unfortunately, it felt like they were taking forever to recharge though. Honestly, that cooldown time is pretty brutal. I also got to see quite a lot of Vikings heading towards King Banta's Island. Oh wait, they're not going for King Banta's Island, they're going for mine. Uh-oh. Nine different ships had started to approach my new entrance on Greater Vortia. There was no way it was going to last, and my walls were already crumbling before all of the enemies made it onto the dock. So I started sending over the only troops that I had on the island to go and help defend. I also tried rebuilding the walls as quickly as possible. Surprisingly enough, my citizens had quickly started repairing, and as the enemies broke down walls, more were built. This stopped the enemies in their tracks, and my archer towers and ballistas were able to take them out. That one really tall ballista on Vortia was even able to get a couple shots off. And now, this Greek fire encampment is definitely going to make things a little bit easier. In efforts to keep King Banta from being suspicious, I ended up promising him that I would help out with the next Viking invasion. This should keep him at bay and prevent him from declaring war on me, as well as make him think that I'm not going to declare war on him. After schmoozing King Banta, I fortified my walls a little bit more and then expanded my graveyard. It was already halfway full, so it made sense to make it bigger. I had also found a new area to place down a Noria, Moat, and Bathhouse. This way, I didn't have to have my walls exposed because I wanted a Noria in the actual ocean. Having one in the moat was sufficient enough. While looking for ways to improve my islands, I had noticed that I had underutilized some farmland that I could fit two more apple farms on. I just had to move things around. I then started placing taverns all throughout the island of Vortia because the citizens were complaining that there weren't enough. I ended up placing down two more taverns, which was more than what they were asking for. This should keep everyone happy, hopefully. I had then received word that there was going to be a Viking invasion in the next couple of years. It also had been a long time since the last one, so it just made sense. I ended up placing down a whole bunch of archer towers, as there were so many different areas on the walls that didn't have protection. Well now they do. The Vikings had made their way over to my islands as the invasion began. It seemed like there was way less Vikings attacking Vortia than the last time. That meant Greater Vortia was definitely going to have a lot more fierce attackers. That definitely appeared to be the case. The nice thing was, they were all spread out though. So when the first enemy landed on my island, they were instantly melted, and that was when the rest of the Vikings started to land. The ships were going one by one, so as the enemies were docking, they got obliterated. Jeez, that Greek fire ballista is insane. After the Viking invasion was over, I started to create some destruction of my own. I ordered the gathering of a whole bunch of trees on one of the forests in Vortia. This way I could use the land to place down some more manors and grow my population. It was a little bit sad destroying all these trees to build more houses, but it made sense because we needed to expand the kingdom. It was either trees or houses for people. Obviously we're going to want to choose houses for people, especially considering there are a couple other forests on this island. 
Even though the happiness on Vortia wasn't a hundred percent, I was pretty satisfied with how happy the people were. Seventy-nine percent wasn't bad at all, especially when we had a population of over sixteen hundred people. I then ended up building a couple more farms, three swine herds and a butcher on Greater Vortia because they didn't have any pork at all, and then I made King Banta happy by talking to him and promising him more troops for the next Viking invasion. Everything was going smoothly. Too smoothly. I had suspicions that something bad was about to happen. Even though there wasn't any signs of anything bad happening, it just felt that way because usually when we go for this long of a period of happiness and peace, it never stays like that. I wasn't going to take any chances with my suspicion, so I ended up going to the witch and paying her 1800 gold to smite all of the vikings that were trying to invade. They all instantly just sunk in their ships. Now that's pretty cool. There was one that survived however. I don't know how, but I paid the witch quite a lot of gold for that and she didn't complete her job fully. It's whatever though, at least I don't have to kill any vikings. It was also pretty nice because in the time that I would have been fighting off the viking invaders, I was able to start building another little subdivision. This land is going to make a great addition to the kingdom. Oh, I mean, uh, what a nice view. The former Vortian army was finally being restored to its former glory. There was an insane amount of troops being trained, and there was already a lot of swordsmen and archers who were prepared to board ships and go to war. The biggest thing we needed was more catapults. It was only a matter of time until I declared the manufacturing of all catapults top priority. So they started popping out of my training facilities like crazy. Let me just go ahead and throw down another ballista tower conveniently on this side. Not for any particular reason or anything, don't worry. We only need a few more troops and then we'll be ready. Wow, being a king can be so demanding. Sometimes you just gotta sit back and relax and watch your castles. You can even see all of the people down there, they look like little ants. As the last few years of preparations came to a close, I started loading all of my troops onto the ships. I wanted to keep each ship organized by unit type. This is the same strategy that I pulled off when I was fighting Queen Mazenberger. To me it made a lot of sense to sort all of the ships this way so that way I know when I need to deploy my catapults, archers, and knights onto the island. Ideally we'd want to start off with the knights, then archers, and then catapults. Believe it or not, loading all of these troops into different ships and organizing them took a couple of years. That's how many troops we had, and more were still being produced. This was going to be an absolutely crazy invasion. Despite my efforts preparing for the war, a bunch of vikings had made it onto my islands trying to distract me. You got lucky this time, Banta. Your kingdom gets to live for another couple years while I fight off these vikings. I honestly was starting to believe the theory I had about the Vikings and King Banta being allied. The reason being is that this was a perfect distraction to prevent me from invading King Banta's kingdom. Very odd. Also you could see all of the Viking ships are sailing past his kingdom right now. But they're not dropping off any troops, they're just returning back to where they came from. After that wild distraction, I had to continue loading all my troops onto the ships. Thankfully, more had been trained in the time that we were fighting off the Vikings, so that meant that this invasion was going to be even bigger. The time had fallen upon us. The invasion was going to begin any second, as my troops sailed their way over to King Banta's island. If he didn't know about the war, he definitely knew it was coming now. Nothing is cooler than seeing the Vortian army make its way over to cause complete chaos and get their revenge. As my troops waited outside of King Banta's walls, I talked to him giving him one last chance to make it up to me. I told him that he has to pay my kingdom a tribute in gold, and he wasn't very happy about that. He did however offer 14 gold. That's it. And then he rashly declared war on me after I told him that wasn't enough. This was his mistake as I was already prepared for war. 
King Banta had immediately rushed his troops to the few ships that he had sitting outside of his castle walls. They started sailing directly over to my castle. They didn't even try to fight my troops that were waiting outside of his. It seemed like he was going to try and rush my walls and see if he could take them down before I could destroy his. That's not going to work out without any catapults, buddy. I was waiting out the rest of King Banta's troops. It seemed like he had only five more to send over, and once again, no catapults. Of course, right as I said that, a catapult on a ship had started making its way over. Oh, the irony. This wasn't going to be enough to do anything, though. It was only one catapult. And of course, the ship that it was sailing on instantly got sunk as it sailed past my castle walls. I had then started to prepare all of my troops for the boarding process. The whole plan was to take down King Banta's walls and immediately go for his keep, trying to retain as much of the city that we could. It was now or never. I told all of my troops to land on the island and start attacking. Unfortunately, some of the ships started to clump up and they couldn't land the troops. I had also forgotten to prepare some of the ships to be able to land troops. This was incredibly annoying, but my soldiers that were on the island I started focusing the archer tower and ballista that was able to damage my troops. I ordered all of the ships that had already dropped off troops to move away from the island. That way, the ships that still had to unload could do it and not be blocked by the empty ones. Once all of the troops had made it onto the island, they started focusing two castle walls. This way, once they were destroyed, everyone else could pile in and start attacking the keep. Right before that though, I had sent some of my swordsmen to go and take care of a few of the ballistas that were posted up along the walls. I had then told my catapults and archers to start focusing on the keep. The catapults had finally made their way into the castle walls. Once they started pelting the keep with rocks, it went down very quickly. And that was the end of King Banta. I ended up exiling him from the land, and told him that he should have never betrayed me when he thought that him and Queen Mazenberger together could take me out. Bringing all of the new citizens, buildings, and materials into the kingdom had got Vortia recognized as a magnificent kingdom. It felt very weird because I was now the only king in all of these lands. The kingdom of Vortia owned it all, and that's why I decided to refer to these three islands as the Islands of Vortia. As much as I wanted to celebrate, I had to recognize that I needed to stabilize the happiness on this new island. It was at around 64% happiness. This wasn't that good and it was heading downward towards 57%. So I needed to do something fast to keep it from dropping even more. Right before I took action, I was talking to one of the knights named Sir Matthew. He suggested that I name the island the Isle of Vortia. I thought that was a very good name, and he fought valiantly in the war. So, I named this new island the Isle of Vortia. I had also started to prepare a feast to feed to all of the new citizens and increase happiness stabilizing the isle. Since King Banta practically had no defenses, that was the first thing on my priority list for the new island. The biggest issue that we have on our hands is that the Vikings could come in and start destroying any building that they want. The only area that's really walled off is the big feast house as well as the military buildings. So I placed some docks and planned on putting walls on top of those docks to wall off the entire island. It also just made sense to keep my islands over on the Isle of Vortia. That way, when these Vikings do come here, they'll be able to kill them off instead of having our buildings getting destroyed. This was a good replacement for the wall while we were waiting. It was also time to place down some more ballistas and archer towers. My troops could be a good distraction to the vikings that make their way on over while the towers pick them off. Three dragons soared through the sky towards my island. Unfortunately, it looked like one giant red one was going towards the Isle of Vortia. As it passed through the main island, it had taken quite a lot of damage. Hopefully the isle can finish it off. 
What the heck? It looks like the archer towers aren't even shooting at the dragon. What's going on? Luckily enough, the dragon wasn't hovering over the isle for too long. It ended up going over to Greater Vortia where it was immediately killed. I had to figure out what was going on with my towers and ballistas. After talking to my advisors and doing some digging, I found out that King Banta had given an executive order to abandon the ballista towers and archer towers at the very last second. I'll give it to him. That is a pretty clever sabotage before being exiled. Thankfully, all three dragons didn't attack the isle, otherwise, things could have gone south. Of course, I gave the executive order to continue manning the ballista towers as well as the archer towers. It wouldn't make sense to have nobody defending the castle when the Vikings invade in one year. It seemed like the people of the isle weren't very happy. I talked to my advisors, and they had told me that we needed a graveyard. After that huge war, there wasn't a place to bury all of the people that had sadly passed away during it. The Viking invasion began. I focused on defending the Isle of Vortia because it had the least amount of defenses. It looked like the enemies were able to just breeze their way through all of the city. I had then sent over my troops to handle them. There even ended up being a pesky catapult that was taking advantage of the lack of defenses on my island. There was actually two of them to be exact. They were just sitting there taking out as many buildings as they could in an area where they couldn't get hit by any of my towers. It seemed like the Vikings actually did a significant amount of damage on all of my islands. So of course, I was inspired to continue further the progress in building up my walls. Each island was going to have a pretty strong and significant wall, so that way no enemies would even be able to attack it. They would just be taken out as they tried taking down the walls. It seemed like everyone was still pretty unhappy in the Isle of Ortia. The recent Viking invasions definitely caused a decent amount of that. So I placed down a bathhouse and then started expanding the walls even faster because I saw what happened in the last invasion and that was on my main island. So I didn't know if I'd be able to even defend the isle if that many vikings started to target it. I was receiving complaints that we needed more doctors on the isle. So I placed down two more clinics to keep everybody at full health. That was when, of course, we got to test out our new defenses. A dragon invasion was happening. And honestly, it didn't go so well. A black and orange dragon in particular was bullying a lot of the buildings. So, when it finally died, I had to replace a lot of the different archer towers across the island. The uninevitable was happening. A Viking invasion. I really wasn't prepared for this one, and I didn't want the isle to get completely destroyed. It looked like a lot of the Vikings though were focusing on the main island of Vortia. Greater Vortia was also getting a pretty fierce attack, but it wasn't as bad. Thankfully, the Isle was able to survive, and it didn't have too many invaders, so we really did luck out. Time started to really fly by, and now started to feel like I was kind of just preparing for the next Viking invasions. That was because the Vikings were now sending huge waves of enemies, and it seemed like they were focusing in on a single island a lot more than they used to. All it would take is a concentrated attack on the Isle of Vortia. If the Vikings just did that, they could honestly level the whole island pretty quickly. My defenses wouldn't be enough to handle the sheer number of enemy units that would be on the island. King Banta, what were you thinking with all of these Norias right next to each other? For once, in my 689 years of ruling this kingdom, I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fight off the Viking invasion depending on where they attack. Let the games begin. A huge swarm of Vikings made their way over to the main island of Vortia. They were attacking at the back gate, and they made it through very quickly. I even started training some troops just in case I needed to send them over to that back gate. It seemed like there were a lot of ogres, and that's how they made it through the castle walls so quickly. They started making their way towards my main base, and then I went to go check on the isle just to make sure everything was going smoothly. Greater Vortia was holding off pretty well, but it did look like there was more enemies heading towards it. And sure enough, right when I thought things were done on Vortia, a whole bunch more ogres started landing and taking out the walls. They were only just being rebuilt, so they weren't that powerful. 
and the ogres took them out pretty quickly. Thankfully, my defenses were prepared, and they didn't make it too far into my kingdom again. That last invasion really made me realize that I needed to step up my defenses, and I needed to do it quickly. The Vikings had attacked my main castle, not even with all of their forces, and they were able to make it into the walls. This was pretty concerning, as this was my best defended castle, and the Vikings were able to make it pretty far. So what did that mean for the Isle of Vortia? It was the newest addition to the kingdom, but that also meant that it was the most vulnerable. Even though we had just conquered all three islands, things weren't going to be as easy as they seem. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. 700 years have gone by. This kingdom has fought off King Banta, Queen Mazenberger, and so many different Vikings I can't even count. It's finally time to relax a little bit and focus in on developing the kingdom itself. It honestly might not seem like there's a lot left to do. Well, there is. Two of the biggest projects that we need to work on is walling off the Isle of Vortia and finish walling off Greater Vortia. The reason that these projects need to be done is that if we want to expand to new lands, we need to be able to defend our current lands even when our troops are away. And I definitely know that the Vikings will always come and knock on our doors. So, having a wall around all of our islands and preventing them from being able to land, or even deal any damage, would be the best bet to keeping the kingdom safe. Speaking of those devils, look who it is. To further prove my point about the Vikings, it looks like the Isle of Vortia is about to be invaded by a whole bunch of them. The thing is, if the whole island was walled off, like Vortia, then we wouldn't have to worry about the Vikings landing and getting free access to raiding our houses, food storages, and other buildings. Well, I think I hyped myself up enough. Time to get building. The Isle didn't have enough resources to instantly build a complete wall along with a whole bunch of docks. So I currently needed to defend it with other means. You know what that entails. More ballistas and archer towers. Oh yeah. You know, I'm a little confused. King Banta sometimes had his moments, and sometimes he didn't. Now my question is, why did he build four Norias right next to each other? That just makes no sense. You really only need one, and it can be further in on the island. It also looked like he was blocking off a stone source. Maybe he did have quarries here, and I just destroyed them, but things just looked very inefficient. So I rebuilt it in what seemed like a neater fashion. I also then placed down only one single Noria and connected it to some aqueducts to power the bathhouse that was nearby. This might have seemed like a waste of time, but honestly, organization really can help sometimes, and King Banta was definitely the opposite of that. That last Viking invasion also inspired me to fortify my weak points on the island of Vortia. Even though it seemed like the walls were already big enough, it never hurts to make them bigger because the Vikings were only going to get bigger themselves and there was also going to be a lot more coming soon enough. It can be really hard to design a very nice looking city sometimes. So I went to Vortia for inspiration. I started checking out what I did on this island so that way I could replicate it on the Isle of Vortia. Surely enough, some dragons ambushed the Isle out of nowhere. We did take them out very quickly but unfortunately some buildings caught on fire and two peasants died. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more. Although it might not seem like a lot of people, two was a number that could have been prevented. If only we had stronger defenses. Well, I know how to solve that problem. Wait, what the heck? The Vikings are here again? They just attempted an invasion a few years back. How can they afford to attack so soon? I guess it's beyond me. The only thing we have to worry about now is defending the cities. Oh my gosh, this is not looking good. Vortia was taking heavy damage to the main walls. And that wasn't even the main forces of the Vikings. The Isle then started to get swarmed by them. This was a moment that I feared for quite a long time. A whole bunch of enemy troops 
landing and having free reign to pillage the isle. My catapults were a little bit slow to react, my archers were a little bit faster, but they still weren't able to make it in time. The city had sustained a decent amount of damage just from the ogres who were marching their ways halfway across the island. I had ordered all of my builders to start focusing on repairs. That way, once the ogres were handled, we could have everything back up and running in the snap of a finger. This last invasion once again reinforced the urgency of getting a wall around the Isle of Ortia. If it doesn't get built soon, and a larger army this time attacks the Isle, the whole island could basically be destroyed. I'm sure my defenses would be able to kill most of the Vikings, but at what cost? It wouldn't be worth having to repair the whole island. What the heck? There's a food shortage on Greater Vortia. How is this even happening? What's going on? I guess regardless of what was going on, I needed to start building some more farms. So that's exactly what I did. I placed down around 16 wheat farms, and then I planned on placing a few windmills, but I didn't have the supplies for it. I had also noticed a spot where I could place another 8 farms. This should at least start stabilizing the food issue that was going on on the island. Nice, that's good progress. One issue that I had overlooked with my wall and dock approach was that the fishing huts would now be blocked off from sending their boats out into the ocean. So I started creating little canals with sea gates so that way they could get in and out. I then started building some graveyards near the cathedral on Greater Vortia. It seemed pretty fitting, but then at the same time I decided that a garden would look a lot nicer. And we already had a decent amount of graveyards scattered throughout the city. So building these gardens would increase the happiness of the people around and make things look a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Talking about being pleased, I really wasn't. The reason being is that the Vikings started to invade again. This time, there were over 50 of them. I needed to make sure that my defenses were prepared for this. And of course, on Greater Vortia, the giants had made their way into my city after destroying some of the new walls. This was a little bit concerning. When checking on Vortia, things seemed like they were pretty chill. Back on the Isle, it seemed like the invasion was just beginning so I didn't know how things were going to end up. In Greater Vortia, the Vikings did make their way into the city, but they weren't able to do too much with it. We were so close to finishing off the wall around the Isle. I just needed to wait for the docks to be completely finished, and then I could place the actual stone walls on top of them. It was time to do a quick little audit to make sure that all of the walls were complete. Unfortunately, I found one little gap where there was a hole, so of course I had it filled. It also seemed like an appropriate time to start building the dock walls on Greater Vortia. We had just finished on the Isle, so now I could use the resources over on Greater Vortia. It seemed like Greater Vortia and the Isle of Vortia were hogging a bunch of my time. So I headed back to the mainland and started looking at what I could build. It seemed like the land near the witch hut was going through a drought, so I placed down a noria connecting to my water reserve so that way the land could start to flourish. I don't know how I forgot to do this a while back, but as you can see there are consequences for forgetting to hydrate all of the lands. I couldn't place any new farms on them and I even needed to destroy some of the older farms, or at least wait until the land gets a little bit more fertile. DRAGONS! Oh wait, never mind, they're not that bad. It seemed like the dragons were a lot less effective at destroying cities than the vikings. Now that's just a little bit embarrassing. Because when you think of dragons, they're supposed to be these strong creatures that could destroy absolutely anything with their fire breath. Apparently not these dragons. What the dragons were lacking in, the vikings made up for. Another invasion began, and this time, it looked like there was a huge amount of vikings all clumped together. On Greater Vortia, the ogres had breached one of my walls. This wasn't unusual. 
but it was annoying because they destroyed one of the manors after breaking into the kingdom and getting killed. There was also a pesky catapult that was sitting on the coast just taking out the walls one by one. I guess that was revenge for what I did to Queen Mazenberger. I had a similar strategy. It's definitely annoying when someone does it to you. While I continued building, I had started to think about settling in new lands. We had now owned three islands in the Kingdom of Ortia, and we could only expand from here. Just the only thing is, there are no new lands. Maybe if we set up some ships to head out and search for some, we could find them. Unfortunately, this would cost troops and also a bunch of settlers. So I needed to make sure that I was fully prepared to send off some of my own people and troops and that they weren't needed at the islands. I started to destroy some of King Banta's poorly placed housing areas. It didn't make sense at all the type of structures he had there, so I honestly just ended up wiping them all out. I probably should have done this at a slower rate, just because a lot of people started to get displaced and didn't have a home for a short period of time while the houses were constructing. This caused a huge drop in happiness. People actually started to leave the Isle of Vortia because of this drop. Some more dragons had flown their way into our lands. There were three this time, a little bit more than usual. That didn't mean that they were going to be an issue though. Once again, we had taken all three of them out with not even a scratch on any of the castles. The dragon had died on some empty land. I knew that I could utilize it, so I decided to build some more graveyards as there were already currently some nearby. I had also gone to check on the land that earlier was going through a drought. It no longer was, and I could now place a whole bunch of wheat farms here. So that's exactly what I did. Oh no, not again. Two pretty large fleets had made their way over to my islands. It was pretty cool because I got to check out my new defenses on the Isle of Vortia. It seemed like there was one ship with a catapult, and all of the ships that didn't have catapults started to bunch up. They weren't doing any damage to my walls, so I really didn't have to worry about them. And once the ship with the catapult was taken out, it seemed like the enemy boats were just sitting along the coast taking arrows from my towers. This strategy honestly was 100% foolproof. Completely walling off my isle made it so that way it was impenetrable, as long as we took out the catapult chips. The food situation had finally stabilized on Greater Vortia. I no longer needed to rush placing down more farms. I did however destroy a small water reservoir and built a big one. The reason being is yeah I know the large ones take up a little bit more space, but they also provide a significantly larger water coverage on the lands. Time really started to fly by as I traded with some merchants, expanded my agricultural areas, and started to fight off another viking invasion. This one was a little bit different. I had walled off most of Greater Vortia, and it seemed like a lot of the viking ships had been fooled into waiting outside of some of my walls. Their catapults weren't able to do any damage to them, and a lot of the ships were just taking heavy fire for no reason. There was a group of enemies that landed on the docks and started dealing damages to the walls. I called these the smart vikings. Too bad the rest of their forces were messing around, sailing into a wall, rather than destroying them. As I was upgrading some of my ballista towers, making them a lot taller, I had forgotten that I had one that was incredibly large. So I decided to try and go and expand it even more. This resulted in me getting an achievement from expanding the tower super high. The range on this thing is insane. Too bad I didn't have it this tall when I was fighting Queen Mazenberger. I honestly ordered the tower's construction to be way too tall. So I decided to take off quite a few levels, and then add in three ballistas once I was satisfied. This way, that area of the map would be completely secure if any ships were sailing by. 
they would almost instantly be taken out by three ballista shots. While I was surveying the islands, I had noticed that the happiness on the Isle of Vortia was pretty low. So I hosted a feast in the name of all of the knights who had passed away while serving. This immediately raised happiness, and the levels were becoming a lot more stable again. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to whoever constructed this wall, that is incredibly off. It was about time for the usual dragon sighting. This time, there were only two of them. The first one had made its way over the Isle of Vortia, and was immediately eliminated. When I tried to see where the second one was at, it was already falling to the ground, dead. The Kingdom of Vortia definitely has the best defenses. If we had just killed off the dragons, that meant that the Vikings were coming soon. And they sure did. Quite a few of them once again got caught up on the Isle of Vortia. They were sailing into the wall like nobody's business. The catapult ships had been taken out, and I had a few archer towers just lighting them up. I even tried constructing some more to make them get killed a lot quicker. Even the extra tower didn't speed up things very much, so I had sent over a bunch of catapults and archers to assist. Back on Greater Vortia, I started to cut out a little path in between the trees on the peninsula part of the island. I definitely wanted to expand over here, but I needed to keep a lot of trees on this side of the island. It was very important to make sure that there was an area to collect wood on every island. So that was going to be the tip of the peninsula. The newly cleared out zone would be for agriculture and of course housing. There really wasn't too many other areas on any of the islands where I could build more housing. So I needed to make sure that it was utilized correctly. Honestly the Isle of Vortia needed to be worked on the most. All of the buildings were placed in the most weirdest configuration. They could have been placed a lot better, but that's going to be a mission for another time. Honestly, we had things down to a science. Most of the Vikings when attacking would get stuck on my walls. This was incredibly overpowered because all of the ships would just sit there and wait to be destroyed. They couldn't really do anything though, as there wasn't really a place to land. Well, I guess there was, but they were apparently too lazy to sail over there. I then continued to make huge improvements on my walls, finished building up the new neighborhood, and started to place down some more agricultural buildings. While I was managing some transport ships, I had been informed by one of my advisors that the Kingdom of Vortia was now recognized as the Kingdom of the Gods. The reason being is that it expanded so large and the quality of life here was so good that everybody in all of the lands nearby wanted to live here. I guess that explains why the Vikings are always wanting to attack and take over these lands. They're jealous, and they want them for themselves. When I had gotten that information, it made me so happy. We had started off as a small little village, and now look at us. We were being recognized as the Kingdom of the Gods. There was no title that was more honorable than that, especially for a kingdom. It was at this point I had realized the kingdom had become so strong it could now fend for itself. It would definitely make sense to expand into new lands. I just needed to prepare some ships with some people on it so that way we could head over and start some new settlements. Of course, right when something good happens, there always has to be something bad that counteracts it. A Viking invasion had began, so I started to talk to the witch and told her to take care of it while paying her in gold. All of the Vikings were struck with lightning and all of the ships that they were sailing on had sunk in the sea. I didn't have to deal with any of them. I started to get into my thoughts and it was honestly a little bit sad. I had recognized that the islands of Vortia no longer needed me to micromanage their every movement. I was honestly thinking about the great war with Queen Mazenberger, the really fast war with King Banta, and back when I only had one single island. Times have really changed, and it was honestly a good time to expand the kingdom into new lands. Maybe we could even become an empire at some point. But I knew I was needed wherever we were going. The people here would suffice without me until I returned. 
Before I left, I wanted to make some last minute arrangements. I guess you could call them improvements. I continued construction on a neighborhood I had started building a while ago, placed a few more farms in Greater Vortia so they never have a food shortage again, and fought off some of the last dragons for a while. Those dragons entailed my last Viking invasion, too. Of course, my defenses had it on lock. The Vikings started to make some very weird moves after getting fried by my Greek fire towers. They started doing the same thing that they always do, and started riding up against the wall, hoping that they'll get in. Well boys, it's now or never. Off to new lands.